blinds. He knows he's not fighting alone. For 50 years, the Foundation Fighting Blindness has funded research into treatments and cures for blinding retinal diseases, providing hope to people with vision loss. And for Mark, winning the fight means being there for his family. The Foundation Fighting Blindness. Together, we're winning. Help us end blinding diseases at fightingblindness.org. My taco pie is really something special, and it can't be imitated. It starts with my zesty taco sauce. Seasoned beef, onions, lettuce, tomatoes, mounds of cheddar, and mozzarella cheese. This pie is the real deal. For a limited time, build your own feast with a specialty pizza. Like my taco pie, a one-topping pizza, and cinnamon monkey bread. Do yourself a favor and order. Today, Godfather's Pizza. Do it. Before Clayton Anderson became a NASA astronaut, he was a public school student in Ashland, Nebraska. As an astronaut flying over Ashland for the first time on the space station, all I could think of was the public school system and the people, the family, the friends who made me the human that I am today. And I thought of Alice Rakes, my science teacher who taught me to question everything and to love the scientific method. I owe it all to those people who helped me get there. Tell us why you're public school proud at publicschoolproudnebraska.org. By texting 64,000, you agree to receive recurring automated marketing messages from Babbel. Message and data rates may apply. No purchase required. Terms apply. Available at babbel.com slash TNC. What's keeping you from learning the language you've always wanted to speak? Too hard. Takes too long. Not with Babbel. Babbel's lessons make learning fun. Fun isn't hard. Right. And in 10 minutes a day, Babbel's bite-sized lessons are designed to get you having real conversations in as little as three weeks. That's not long. It's not hard. It's, it's perfect. perfect. It starts here. And now try Babbel for free by texting radio to 64,000. Text RADIO to 64000. Bet the NBA play-in tournament with a no-sweat same-game parlay from FanDuel, and you've got a lot of options. Because it doesn't matter if you're new to FanDuel or you already have an account, you're going to get bonus bets. I tell you, bonus bets back if your same-game parlay doesn't win on any Tuesday night matchup. And NBA same-game parlays are the perfect way to combine your bets for a chance to score a bigger payday. Whether it's Sacramento, Miami, L.A., it doesn't matter. Have some fun with some same-game parlays however you want to play. Just head to FanDuel.com slash zone to bet the NBA with a no-sweat same-game parlay. That's FanDuel.com slash zone. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. 21-plus in President Iowa. Minimum three-leg parlay required refund issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets expire seven days after receipt. Max refund $5 unless otherwise specified restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than they're worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now, get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash sports, ramp.com slash sports, R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. The Zone Hotline is powered by 42 Degrees, the source, by your mom's house. Roofing, siding, and gutters. Make the right call with the rooferees at John Higgins Weather Guard. 1620 The Zone. I feel like I'm ready for a new challenge. I feel like college was obviously amazing, and you get to a point where it's like, all right, I'm ready for something new, and... Um, that's exactly like one of the top reasons I wanted to leave is like you get to play against, against the best players in the world every single time you step on the floor. It's one of the most competitive leagues, is the most competitive league in the world. I think the biggest thing is like all this has come with just the person that I've, I am and the player that I've been able to be. And that's exactly how I you know, want to go into the WNBA is don't change anything that I've done. Um, obviously learn, adapt, um, find ways to get better. Um, 
you know, people are going to expose my weaknesses, but that's the amazing thing about it. That's the challenge that I wanted. And um, yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. Obviously getting to play with Aaliyah that lights your eyes up as a point guard. Um, but yeah, I think it's just exciting. They want to get back to their winning ways, obviously championship pedigree there. And uh, what Linda has done uh, has been absolutely incredible. So I can't imagine a better place. Obviously, it's the Midwest. Everybody knows it's going to be a hard ticket to get. Uh, so if you haven't got, haven't got your tickets yet, you better get them now. Um, I'm excited. Live from 50th and Capitol Avenue in the Big O, this is Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone, 1620thezone.com and 1620thezone TV. Now here's Gary, Nick, and Jimmy. Hey, guys. Great to see you. Hey, good to see you as well. All of you on uh, 1620 The Zone TV. Good Tuesday morning. Tuesday. Tuesday. What's up, brother? Storms. Smells like a storm outside. Oh, that's a very Midwestern thing. Doesn't it? Does it? It has that. We started to pick up when I walked in. Uh, Good morning, everybody. Welcome in. Uh, The whole gang is here. I just realized something. Uh. As it was ladies' night last night with the WNBA draft. Uh, they don't always fly private in the WNBA, correct? Uh, yes. No, they don't. Like, you might get lucky this summer, and you might be sitting, like, next to Caitlin Clark yep. on a uh, commercial flight from Indianapolis to Vegas to true. go play the Aces. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's very true. That is... Uh, to that's, Vegas. I think Caitlin Clark... Nah, you need to stop drinking, man. That that is, that's, that's a little bit... Mm, I mean, people got... You know, for the first time, if you didn't know, WNBA players don't make a lot of money. Yeah. So that's why they have to uh, go over and play overseas in the offseason. So Caitlin Clark's rookie contract was uh, revealed last night. And you went, hmm. Well, she'd have trouble living in New York City on those salaries. Yes. Thank God for the endorsements. uh, Yeah. Which are going to be bigger and better and hopefully uh, help that league. But look. Man, you could be you could be connecting at O'Hare. You could be standing like waiting in line at O'Hare with Caitlin Clark yeah. and uh, Leah Boston this summer. Yeah, so oh, you're, you're in Indianapolis a, and you see Cardosa. That oh, is a that is a She's bad tall. look for that, like a for the league. Yeah. Now, well, you I, know, you always see the college players kind of sprawled out all over like the the waiting area, getting more. ready for their flight over at their gate. Yeah, usually, yeah, because there's no chair. That those chairs as is, is, is comfortable as they try to be, they're they're not very comfortable. I'm trying to think, the probably the last time that she saw the inside of a real airport, high school, because our Iowa women <laughs> fly charter. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I got a flight to catch, or uh, you know, like when she's probably done all of these uh, endorsement deals, probably a private plane. Yeah, she's not, she's not on the Southwest connecting flight to. Midway. So, like the first time in like five years, her, her first commercial flight will be with her professional basketball team. Mm-hmm. It's 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 crazy. the The salary that the, the slotted salary that you see. I mean, year one seventy six thousand like, dollars. Ask for extra pretzels and put them in your bag. And again, I'm I'm trying not to focus, especially for her, on the actual WNBA annual salary because that's just going to be a nice little thing that she can put away because of the endorsement money she's getting, but. Yeah. Well, it's a revenue issue. That league doesn't make any money. So yeah. hopefully with this influx of talent that you probably recognize more in their draft than you will in the NBA draft, they can rectify some of that. But she's going to be fine. It's just the league. Hopefully the league starts operating at a plus and not a minus, and they can change some things. But just Caitlin Clark going to be flying commercial. Mm-hmm. I got that uh, game in uh, Chicago. We're either going to bust or we're going to fly commercial. I hope there's not a delay. Well, that ain't your plane. Yeah. Yours is the one rolling in here. Uh, it was pretty cool last night, though. Uh, if you watched it, it went quick. 36 picks, and Jazz Shelley uh, got drafted. Uh, first time a Nebraska player straight off the Nebraska roster has been uh, drafted in a while. Uh, good luck. The other thing about the WNBA, it is extremely talented, and there are very few spots that are open for the 36 that got drafted. I think last year only 15 players made it out of the draft. Oh, wow. And so... Uh, not a guarantee that she will be in the uh, WNBA, but nonetheless, uh, still uh, nice to be uh, drafted. Yeah, she was by uh, Phoenix, the uh, Mercury last night. And we were wondering about the the, the fits. Yep, they, they went all in. It I was, was saying it was red ladies, carpet affair. It was ladies' night last it was, night. It was. Yeah, I was kind of went quick. I mean, it was. Uh, it started about six thirty. It was done by eight thirty. I was watching Ooh, some hockey it. afterwards. Oh, hey, if that's good night. You you know that now we would like like the NFL draft, which starts a week from Thursday, mm-hmm. to be like that. 
but they're in it for the TV and it's yeah. a production. So they're going to draw it out as long as possible. Hell, I got it three days and it's this huge, massive event. But I liked it. It was nice and quick last night. Yeah, hoping, take- for, hoping for some drama with the number one pick, but dang. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be a, a 11th hour trade. Oh, my God. It was the Sparks are just thankful they were able to get Cameron. Well, Wright. maybe you know Chicago gets both Angel Reese and Cardosa. So I mean, there's I don't know. There was something there. I don't know if it was being discussed in the in the in the war rooms. If uh, if that just wrecked everyone's mock or not. But uh, that was I thought that was interesting. Like, wow, those are two really good players. Do you, uh, do you know many people that were doing a mock NBA draft or, or or within a pool? Yeah, or had a had a mock party other than the players that were actually involved and in, you know their teammates. Yeah, uh, not yet. Not yet. We're not there yet. Maybe, uh, maybe someday. So driving in this morning, I almost called the local uh, radio show. Um, uh, it was one? a music station. Oh, OK, so I, I think they were I, I think they were live, you know, because here's the thing, like the music stations, <laughs> they say they come on at five and they're at five. Yeah. OK, they, they voice track like yeah. the first hour. We, we have a station in this building. It's live right now. They say they come on at five. I was just talking. <laughs> no. Yeah. One. But yeah. boy, do they provide some good content between five and six? Yep. It was not their station. It's so planned. I'm driving yeah. in and uh, I almost, I haven't called into a radio show. Well, I think since I got into this business, like once in a while I would call into, uh, like I, I used to, when I was growing up, there was a talk show that was carried on TV mm-hmm. in Des Moines and I would call it once in a while just because it was kind of cool. And, yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, I was, I was, a let's total, go to Gary and urban. I was, a, I was a total D bag when I was, uh, helping out when I was first starting uh, doing high school stuff for 1620. And this was back in the days of Kevin and Bob. I think it, when they were talking some high school sports, I, I like would call in like, oh, yeah, by the way, guys, uh, this is uh, just in case you didn't know. Thinking, I think I was contributing. They're yeah. probably like, oh, my God, tell this guy to leave us alone. I could I, I, I could try, but I would I, I wouldn't do it to anybody. I could probably change my voice and, and prank somebody. Um, in college, I used to call <laughs> as Daryl from Spring, Texas. Well, I used to also call, I think we all kind of did this when we were teenagers, you'd call like, a, you know, like when, when back in the day, when radio stations were live, basically throughout the day and into the evening where there'd be a live jock. So when they say, hey, he's coming up seven and seven and uh, give us your favorites. Two for Tuesday. And nowadays when you call, you just get like ring and ring and ring or whatever, or it's like, yeah. it's like the other lines are full. Uh, but back in the day, there would be somebody in the studio and they'd answer the phone. So we'd all done this, like, yeah. hey, do you have red man in a can? And they'd say, what? I'd say, Let it out. You know, <laughs> all those like stupid ones you'd either call a grocery store or a radio station. Is your refrigerator? Hey, running? we yes. don't even have a fridge. They said it's runny. <laughs> no. Usually I, I would have mad respect for uh, DJs that got the joke <laughs> or like, yeah. yeah, red man in a can. Uh, yeah. Do you? Yeah. Uh, but I almost called a, a radio show. I'm, I'm pretty sure. That they are, they are one of the rare local ones that kicks off at five. Oh, um, I know which one you're talking about then. But they were having a discussion about the goat elephants. Oh. Okay, now you got me interested. I'm listening. Yeah. So I, I need to stand up for something here. Um, <laughs> I think we all in agreement that cartoon elephants, Dumbo is like the goat. Mm-hmm. Like there's no one close to Dumbo with the cartoon elephants, I agree. He he stands alone. He does. Babar could take a game or two. Now, yeah, yeah, ba- now, yeah. Now, yeah. now, Babar, Babar, hello, Babar. But here was the thing. He was I'm king. listening to this radio show, and they they give they give Dumbo the proper credit, yep. but they kind of keep it moving. And they said the most the second most popular uh, elephant of all time is Horton. Really? What's the number of this station? I well, I mean, I am Dr. S- Dr. Seuss is pretty fine. You heard uh, of who? But, but but they weren't. they. So then they started to name some other just obscure cartoon elephants. And I'm talking to my radio, Babar. Babar. Or, you know what? Humor me, Snuffleupagus. Which is still one of the great what? mysteries of all time. How, yeah, how I mean, Big Bird Ape was able to keep Snuffleupagus <laughs> so quiet for so long. Fear. You know, you, you, you thought that Big Bird was like on the edge and was having problems because he had an imaginary friend. I mean, we all had an imaginary friend right. back in the day. Some yeah. still do. His just happened to be an elephant. Yes. And, you know, then then it's a big moment. I wish I would have remembered, like, when they in the mid-80s revealed Snuffleupagus as a real character, what that was like. Because probably kids were traumatized and have never recovered. Yeah. But this station, this discussion, and I was very amused by it because 
I mean, who doesn't want to talk about elephants at 535 in the morning? I like it. I like I'm, it a lot. I'm all for it. But, but gosh, I might even send this guy a DM. Did Snorky How, get some love? No. They, 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 no were, they, they focused on double. And then they had this long discussion about Horton. And then there were other yeah. ones that probably are in kids' cartoons. And, I mean, I don't know. As, as an adult that doesn't have kids, I don't know. Is it kind of creepy to watch kids' cartoons? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, to get a scouting report on when you go be a predator. Um, but they never brought up Peppa Pig says they never brought up Babar. And I'm like, how can you not? That's a load of crap. I mean, we're going down. Yeah. We're almost, that's almost a hundred years old. Yes. And the fact that of all of the elephants that have been in movies or books, nobody, and again, Dumbo is by itself. Yeah. Nobody has had the level of success of Babar because he was in Fletch. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. When you're referenced exactly. in Fletch yep. as a real name, mm -hmm. uh, is that two B's or one? Just one. Just one, yeah. No, uh, not together. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 it almost happened today. I almost broke my streak about 25 years of not calling into a local radio show. I don't show. know how you did it because I don't know how you don't give him more credit. He came from almost nothing and became king and ruled That's the true. elephant world. Yeah. That, uh, there's, he was a dynasty. He's, he's the American dream. He was Saban. Yeah. But for elephants. He forged his path in the world. That's and sure. this radio station, Omaha, Nebraska, blatantly disrespects him and ignores right. him. That's well. Yeah. I, I think I was also hope like like in my mind, I'm already thinking about my call uh, and what I'm going to say on air, so they mm -hmm. don't like drop me or think I'm just wacko. Thanks for is big we do there. need in terms of cartoon elephants, we do need another era. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, like we had the Dumbo era yep, and yeah. we had Babar, mm -hmm. and now we've kind of like been floating through the cartoon elephant world for many many years. We need another cartoon elephant to come along, but I think the creators are afraid of they can't just properly do the elephant right. That's it, just my hot take. It's is it, is it the elephant's journey backstory or is it just the overall elephant's name? Because well, I, I think the, na the name does a lot right there, too. I, don't know. I think elephants are really popular. I go to the zoo, and that's one of the more oh, popular they're, things. They're amazing. The baby elephants, especially. When we went, they were hiding. I was sad. I cried the whole way home. The baby elephants? Yeah. It's a couple yeah, weeks ago. It's Wow. <laughs> I thought we, wow. thought we were kicking the tires of an old childhood memory. Didn't realize this was. <laughs> wow, that's Mark. Can I get close to home there? Oh, very, very, very. February. February. What did you do? Walk it off, go to the uh, desert dome? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good. Actually, I went to see the penguins. See the reptile. Oh, the penguins. Are I fun. spent like 20 minutes. Did you see my there. penguin? I did. Saw all of them. They were great. What, what, what's your penguin's name? I have no idea. Come on. You got, didn't you get just, to name I, them? Uh, no. Well, them. no. I think I got to name them. I'm not really sure. I need to check it's up like on that. That was like Schmidt, two, that was like two years ago that I sponsored a penguin. Do you guys send each other birthday cards? Mm, no. Oh. And to be fair, I've probably been a terrible dad because mm. I have not been to the zoo in a couple of years. It would be a great Dearest penguin. Dearest Yammer, <laughs> apparently the zone is going to end. I, I, I think, I think I mean, you could, the guy could point at the penguins and go, hey, that that's yours over there. And I'll be like, oh. Uh, of course. Looks like wait, the one next to it. Wait, he was and the one behind it. He was different a week ago. Bang, I, hey, do you really know that? Can I have documentation? <laughs> I feel like the, the elephants right now, too, are being recycled because uh -huh. the ones that I remember growing up, yeah, yeah Dumbo was, I would agree. It, you you first learned about Dumbo, but then for me, it was it was Babar. Hello, Babar. And then the second book I ever read. I would After say probably <laughs> Mr. Snufflepuffius. <laughs> Hold on. I wasn't a normal kindergartner. <laughs> I would say so. <laughs> Hello. Uh, Snorky made uh, an appearance every now and then when I was uh, growing up, too. But I think the the recycling of them has happened a lot where you just bring it back. So, yeah, you you can't just introduce one new one. And now with, uh, you know, having a, a young boy that likes to watch some cartoons from time to time, it's it's all about the dog now. It's all about the dog. Like the, the most popular. Is it Bluey a dog? Yes, Blue Bluey is so popular. Bluey's actually, if if you got to watch something with your kid, Bluey's actually a lot of fun. But it's again all dogs. There's no elephant. I, any any show that he ever watches, there's no elephant. There's the buddy cop movie, neat dog and elephant. Oh, hmm. that could be a good two, a 2024 thing. Got to have a dog and an elephant. Maybe it's a it's an animated odd couple, like dogs and cats. You know, are supposed to fight, and that's not yeah. necessarily true. What would dogs and elephants dogs do? And well, Ooh. he could get stepped on. Yeah. That would end the movie. <laughs> It'd be a really short series. I feel like if uh, Joe Pesci from Goodfellas was in Home Alone. See, this is, this is set up as a bracket as the best cartoon characters and like have a bracket of death. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Where like, <Just> as, <laughs> I mean, why not? <laughs> the death region. <laughs>
Like Ooh, that's the one you want to avoid. Like, if, if yeah. we're, and like I think Dumbo would have a tough time. <laughs> I, I yeah, do too. I don't yeah. think Dumbo, Dumbo yeah. has a mean streak. In nope. Him. Although it's it's those it's those really nice ones. It maybe he has a really long fuse, but when it goes, oof. is Eeyore a elephant? No, I don't think so. No. What is Eeyore? Sad. <laughs> <laughs> avid <laughs> avid Radiohead fan. Yeah. Coldplay. Yeah. <laughs> Very much in the emo. Yeah. It's like if Eeyore, Eeyore was in this bracket and he got triggered. Yeah. He's he's, 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 always, he's always he's always fighting something. Um, uh, all right, he snaps like in falling down. It's over. We'll see if this uh, mm-hmm. local DJ who has been around for a long time responds to my uh, DM about our uh, our uh, elephant talk. Yes, okay, Eeyore's a donkey. Okay. Sometimes it, and and I will I I will never do this. I will never confuse a donkey and an elephant. But I was just no. curious. <clears throat> you start getting into those fun names, and you're like, wait a minute. Then you got to think back. I mean, do, does anybody know what the hell Goofy is? He's a dog. Is he? Yeah, yeah. he's a dog. He's is dog. he a dog? Oh, yeah. Mm. Pluto's a dog. And a planet forever. There's no debate in Pluto. Goofy? You think he's got a uh, little uh, gender issue? I don't know. Is that know. what you're implying? At, at times, I, I don't know if he fits Was the he full dog profile. Time? Has nothing to do with his, uh, his sex either. I think he, well, he talks like a guy. He's got a, a male voice. I, I just, I don't know. I, I'm not dog, convinced he's a dog. Dogs periodically talk. Mm-hmm. That just depends on what time of the day it is for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what you're doing. Coming up uh, in about an hour, Sam McEwen's going to stop by. This is a busy day in uh, Lincoln. Uh, this is the last time that practice is open to uh, the masses. So the uh, running of the journalists will begin <laughs> at about 9 a.m. this morning. <laughs> That's what I want to see. <laughs> uh, it's like the Baylor student section when they used to take Stiff arms so with sip. Because of our, our schedule here, I uh, haven't been able to partake, but. That's what they should do. They should do an air horn and then the journalists sprint to their <laughs> respective spots yep. to watch practice. <laughs> Sam McEwen will join us coming up at uh, 730. Who wins, by the way? Uh, there's some. Who's hey, the fastest one out there? There are some young, oh, yeah, young, that's true. young bucks, some eagers, men and women that are covering Nebraska that would put us to shame. Some eager beavers. Like it, like Chattel, Sam and myself. Just let the guys I'd win. Uh, it's not all about the speed, too, though. You know, do you have good boxing out ability? Do you, you have, play dirty? It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Time. You know, when you got the person that's striding ahead of you, you you you, you smack the one foot so the other foot hits that one, and then they trip. Like the twenty four seven guys and the on three guys battle. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then I think they just sneak should. around the button and, and oh win. God. They should have the recruiting sites kind of in one corral. Oh my God, Shafe's gone to the elbow. <laughs> get, uh, get him, Shafe. BC will join us at eight thirty, and then Andy Kennedy stops by at uh, nine forty five. Mike uh, Schaefer or Corey Schlesinger? <laughs> as, the fittest. as spring football is uh, now into its uh, fourth week, also, I, I got a number for the uh, tickets that are sold. A little over 50,000 uh, tickets have been mm-hmm. sold. Hmm. Yeah. It's okay. I mean, it's all about the weather. The weather is nice next Saturday. They'll have a nice oh, walk-up, yeah. mm-hmm. which they usually do. I did find out, uh, I'll share this a little bit later, about ticket prices. Ooh. That's not a good uh, Yeah, well, they've, they've changed a little bit. Mm. Uh, so we will uh, get into that. Among other things, and a uh, a pretty important baseball game down in Lincoln tonight Mm -hmm. between uh, Nebraska and Creighton with a uh, 6 o'clock first pitch, start of an eight-game homestand for Nebraska. Creighton is in the middle of a long road trip. I was looking at Creighton's schedule. They don't have many home games left. No, they don't. They have like two homestands and that's it. Yeah, the two-game series against uh, Coastal next week, midweek. Uh, Then that leads into a home series, and then I think they have one more after that. If I'm not mistaken, so yeah, yeah. that's maybe six or eight. But both games. teams still have uh, RPIs that are in the uh, top fifty. So we'll get into uh, who needs uh, that uh, more. Um, but we do want to mention um, last night on the Husker Sports Network, the voice of the Huskers, Greg Sharp, revealed uh, that he has been diagnosed with uh, cancer, pancreatic cancer. Which, first and foremost, uh, I think we've all been impacted by somebody close to us that has been uh, affected by cancer. And there is no doubt it sucks and it takes people away from us. And um, there are people that win battles against cancer, but when you hear the word cancer, you immediately go, oh, and then you put on the gloves and you go to fight. Mm -hmm. And uh, anytime I hear pancreatic, um, that is a hell of a fight. And Greg Sharp last night uh, revealed that. And the thing that he has going for him is many, many, many things is he is a man of faith and he has an army of people that will be praying for him and giving him support 
to him and his family uh, so that he can make it through this and he has good resolve. And so our, our thoughts and prayers, and we're with you for uh, the voice of the Huskers uh, to uh, fight this. Uh, just, just you guys know what it, what it did to my family yeah. um, to fight this. And, and I know that he will. And I know, you know, you're, you've worked uh, closely with him on the Nebraska baseball broadcast. So when you heard the news a couple of days ago from him, it hit you pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah. And we were at the dinner table last night as I'm, you know, I'm sure a lot of people who are, are in Greg's circle and knew there was an announcement coming up last night and it was, it, you, you bring up probably the part that got to me the most. And that was what he talked about the support staff and, and, and obviously that's what your, your mother had with, with you and, and your brother and your family. That's the most important thing. And it, it, I always, every time I hear about this and you're right, I mean, it's, it's affected everyone and whether it's you personally that have had to take on that fight or it's a friend or a family member, I, I always remember what Stuart Scott says and said about it. You, you don't get beat by cancer. The way you battle it is, is it, the, the way you fight it and the way you win is how you fight it, how you battle it. And sometimes the, the end result is obviously not what you want, but it is how you fight. And, and the one thing I know about Greg, and I think anybody who heard that announcement last night, you could tell he didn't want to make that announcement. I think yeah. the context of it was something that was important because you start missing a lot of your, your engagements. You start maybe missing a game or two and people are always wondering, and we do, we always, we, always, we, we we ask questions. We want to know if someone's still employed. We want to know if, if, if you know, you do every once in a while wonder if, if everything's okay. Um, and I know that's why he wanted to get that out there. He didn't ask for people to come to his support, but I think he knew, and I think he he's, he's feeling that love right now. And when he talked about his relationship with, uh, with God, uh, that got to me and, and obviously his wife and, and his girls, I immediately think of them too, of, how strong they will be as a, a support system, but also the the many people in the media that not only consider Greg a colleague, but a friend. Um, they're going to be there every step of the way with him. And I just, yeah, it it obviously, it, it rattled me and, and so many others that, that know him, whether you know him intimately or just as a colleague or or just as someone that you, you listen to, who's a, a friendly, familiar voice on the radio, uh, it, it, it impacts you. And like you said, Gary, when you hear pancreatic, you know that that takes on a different fight and that takes on a lot of strength and that takes on a lot of, uh, a lot of faith. And I, I think over the last 24 hours, not even since this has been made public, um, I can, I, I feel very, very confident that he's, he's feeling that support. And it's, I think he probably knew yeah. he had a lot of people in his corner. I, I think la after last night, it was probably overwhelming, and I'm sure if if you've sent him a text, if you sent him something that uh, of well wishes, um, I'm sure he'll he'll get back to you if he didn't last night too. But um, yeah, just uh, thinking of my friend as we all are, and um, yeah, I've known him twenty years or so, and uh, when I was in college, uh, Tom Hedrick, who. Obviously, I mean, you, you know, and, and uh, he told me, give Greg, give Greg Sharp a call at WIBW. And I was looking for, you know, I need to start looking at my first job. I'm going to graduate soon. So I call him over at, at, at WIBW radio in Topeka and I leave a message. I'm like, he's not going to get back to me. Who, I'm nobody. And so, and he got right back to me and he wasn't able to help me get that first judge just because of the timing. Mm -hmm. But the fact that he talked it out with me and was super positive and he's been very helpful over the years to me and has never asked for anything in return. And, uh, when Nick told us yesterday, uh, I, I, the first thing you just start getting really reflective But the first thing I thought of was, Besides Greg, I, I thought about his family and, um, and, and I, and I, and I told you Sharpie uh, during break, um, all, all you guys are, are around the same age. You guys aren't old. So for that to happen to him, 
I, I think of any of the people we know around that age happening to, and it just shows how, you know, it, you just never know. And it's, he's going to fight like hell. And uh, we watched the thing last night and it, yeah, you're right, Nick, everybody, everybody's behind. And, and some of the comments that people made on the boards, and, cause I, I went to all the, the boards after and, and on Twitter, it just shows how great these people are in this part of the country. And, and not just Nebraska, but all the people back back in Kansas uh, that were reaching out because he's had a huge impact down there, um, not just for his work in Topeka, but at Kansas State, but also to the many young broadcasters that were coming up uh, down there. And I was just one of them. And I was, and I will forever be very thankful for his uh, friendship and his impact to me. And hey, everyone's behind him. Mm-hmm. Everybody. Well said by uh, both of you. And so thoughts and prayers and a uh, tough man who will uh, put up a hell of a fight. And uh, the UTEP game will be here soon enough. And Greg will be right back yep. in the uh, booth high above uh, Memorial Stadium. All right, 35 past the hour. Good Tuesday show, everybody. We'll keep that. There's some severe weather in the uh, area that uh, if anything uh, happens of significance, we'll uh, let you know off and running on a Tuesday on 1620 The Zone. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley. On 1620 The Zone and 1620thezone.com with Gary Sharp and Nick Hanley. Remember, no matter how you listen, it's still AM radio. 1620 The Zone. Omaha Maverick baseball is on fire. Three straight series wins, and the Mavs lead the Summit League in conference wins. Tonight, the Mavs take on the Big 12 powerhouse Kansas Jayhawks at Dal Anderson Field. It's $2 Tuesday. All Pepsi products and Bush Light cans are $2 from when the doors open until the third inning. This weekend, Maverick baseball plays Northern Colorado, and softball plays Kansas City. Both series are at Maverick Park. Get your tickets by calling 402-554-MAVS or by going to omavs.com slash tigs. Watching a ball game at Oscar's Pizza and Sports Grill is pretty awesome. Oscar's offers the MLB package, so your team is always on their upgraded audio video system, and nothing is better than watching the game with a cold, frosty one, Oscar's Pizza, or award-winning char-buffed wings. And with daily lunch and dinner specials, it's really a no-brainer. So get ready to watch your favorite team play ball at Oscar's Pizza and Sports Grill, 173rd West Center Road, and takeout at 162nd in Maple. Come join OSI Industries in Oakland, Iowa. Does a retention bonus and a $3 an hour attendance incentive sound good to you? Besides competitive pay starting at $17.50 and up per hour, overtime is available. OSI Oakland offers great benefits including medical, dental, vision, and 401k. OSI Oakland is hiring for all shifts including production and maintenance. Apply at osigroup.com slash careers or at their plant Monday and Wednesday 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Must have ID and closed toe and heeled shoes to enter the plant. OSI is an equal opportunity employer. Bonuses are subject to eligibility and program requirements. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash radio. Through HIMSS, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you, discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at HIMSS, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash radio and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash radio. That's hymns.com slash radio for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash R-A-D-I-O. When you keep a car for a long time, it becomes a classic. When you keep your air conditioner for a long time, it becomes, well... Let's just say it doesn't get better with age. Call Standard Heating and Air Conditioning and have your old air conditioner checked out. If it's needed, you can have a brand new carrier air conditioner installed in no time with fast and easy financing. When the other company sends salesmen, Standard sends qualified technicians. It's just part of the way we do the things we do. Carrier, turn to the experts. The world's largest sports book in Las Vegas is available right at your fingertips in Iowa. The Circa Sports Iowa app is sports betting the way it should be. Bet anywhere in Iowa and experience high betting limits, 
tight money line splits, and exceptional customer service. Download your new bookie today. Visit CircusSports.com and start betting like a pro from anywhere in Iowa. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7633. Hi, this is Doug Nodgard with Equitable Bank. Great service never goes out of style. When the digital age dawned, many said computers would be able to handle many of the interactions that used to take a person. Boy, were they wrong. How many times have you called your bank and gotten a recording to press one or two? Not at Equitable. Not only does Equitable answer your call in the first ring, it's answered by a human being. That's because Equitable Bank values its customers. Equitable Bank, we take banking personally, member FDIC. There are any number of reasons you might consider selling your home. To move closer to family, live within a smaller budget, or just wanting a change of scenery. Whatever your reasons, having to figure out all the various housing market trends in your area may not be what you signed up for. That's where an agent who is a Realtor comes in. Realtors have the expertise to help you find the right price and navigate the process to sell your home in a way that's right for you. That's who we are. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. All right, welcome back in on a uh, Tuesday morning. Tuesday, Tuesday. It's going down on Tuesdays. It's a little thing. No, 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 okay. no, no. It's been replaced by. Okay. What's uh, up, brother? What's up? What's up, brother? <laughs> I say that to uh, Michigan Lance. What's up, brother? <laughs> what's up? Hey, yeah. hey, do you, do you need to, you need to, you, when your son gets up this morning, that's how you should greet him. That's what they say. What's up, brother? Yep. I should say that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, and he, and He'll know he, what you're talking about. He, he, I, I know your son. He is uh, pretty tied in. He'll know what you're talking about. He will laugh. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Somebody went viral with some stuff like that. All right. <laughs> uh, hey, I want to say, uh, you know, uh, shout out to your to your friend, your colleague, your mentor, uh, Greg Sharp, right? Yep. And, um Hey, I just want to say, yeah, you know, it's unfortunate, you know, you got this uh, illness now, but hey, but also right now he's still here. So we're not mourning anything. You know what? Hey, let's enjoy his time while he's here and and continue to support him and his family and do what you got to do. This isn't death. I think some people get feeling, feel like, oh, this is, it's so sad. It's, it ain't over. So, hey man, keep your head up and and keep moving, and and let's enjoy this time we got with him and everybody else in your life. Yeah, well said. Very well said. Um, and so, uh, so now we get on to the sports. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of things going on in the world. So, I, I want to go back to women's basketball, and I was thinking about Kim Mulkey at LSU, mm-hmm. and and then I was thinking about Jim Harbaugh and Michigan Wolverines. Obviously, I'm a Michigan fan, and Kim Mulkey. If you look at their season. She did not handle adversity well and with her team. And then you look at a guy like Jim Harbaugh and the Michigan program, they handle adversity very well. And I start looking at Moki's career, looking back and like, man, it, it, it seemed like if she needs things to go smoothly to be successful. Because remember, right, with Brittany Griner, um, there were some issues there. You know, they only got one title out of that team. And it really should have been more, don't you think? Uh, I don't remember much around her, but uh yeah, they were always they were always knocking on the door. They would make the final four, yeah. but that was uh that well, was right I, in the heart of the was, UConn, yeah, that was, run, right? Yeah, that was when you had to overcome the giant there. Yeah, but I mean, she had some ballers too that could have overcome the giant. Like it was I mean, she had the giant and it wasn't it she had better supporting cast at that time than Caitlin Clark did. I mean, so like th- there was some, I believe she underachieved. And, and when, and so I just kind of started looking at, you know what? It, it, there's some things that always have to go in and, and right for, for Kim Mulkey. You know what I mean? To be successful. Like, like bringing up that stuff with the Washington Post before we even know about it. Like who, who like now you got your team focused on that. Like, so I just kind of looked at that was like, and looking at her career and, and things of that nature. And, and and it kind of goes back to you know also kind of goes back to what Greg Greg Sharp is going to hey man there's adversity 
but persevere through the adversity. You can do that. You know what I mean? And and not not be able not to do it. So and I'm I'm big on that. And then uh and then Purdue and hey, P- Purdue and Utah. Hey, one thing we did know, the best player was Edie. Yes. On the floor. I mean, hey man, that dude like I I thought he was good. I didn't know he was that good. Like, I love when I love when, when you're the supposed to be the man and you have this praise and player of the year. And then when it's time when the light is on for you to show that to ever the whole world and you step up and do it, I'm all about that, man. Yeah, that it that was, guy was a it was, he was a dog. It was best player versus best team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, very, right. Well, very well put. Yeah. Best guard hey, the best guards because his guards didn't show up. And UConn did. <laughs> I yeah, mean, they did. UConn's guards was ready to go, and and Purdue tucked their tail. They were like, they ran up against the man and was like, oh uh, yeah, I'm, I don't know if I want this work. Yeah. And that was that was unfortunate. You know, that was kind of crazy. To hey, see. enjoy your uh, spring game uh, on uh, Saturday on Fox. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, we'll see how that goes. I'm, you know, I really haven't even been paying attention to the new regime as of right now. I'm still high off. Oh, you know on. the national championship in the in the last regime. Okay. So I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off until I'm gonna ride this thing until the season starts. Um, I don't know about Wink Martindale and the, another old guy. Like uh, I don't know. And, and then, uh, you, you got one, I know. Yeah, I don't know about him. You guys, you guys, were you guys kind of like? Ooh, he moved the needle. He wasn't for me. Mm, you no, think of Wing no, and by the way, I mean, uh, the the problems off the field continue with Denard Robinson getting a DUI yesterday. Oh, I didn't see that. I didn't yep. know that. Yeah, yep. so that's Here one thing go. that uh. hasn't changed. But I will say this: you, <laughs> away, away for you uh, to wrap up <laughs> Come things. On, man. Oh, oh, next week. I mean, I think Michigan's gonna have about fifteen guys, just like Georgia, a great Georgia team. Michigan can have about fifteen guys drafted. Yeah, 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 hey, man, yeah. That it's, it's funny. It was, it's been a mass exodus. We got people in the portal, people getting drafted. So it's uh, it's gonna be interesting next year to see how he holds this thing together. But but I do believe. I still don't think. I still think no matter what happens next year, I still think we beat Ohio State. Ooh, I'm, I'm not a, wow. Ooh, I'm ah, not a, uh, I don't know. We got hey, a lot of time before that. But hey, uh, hey, hey that's an A squad right just there. Just because you got a lot of talent, don't mean you're gonna win. I don't know. I man. mean that, that's been proved. Well, but they're hey. deep. They, uh, then, and Lance, thanks for the phone call. Watching Ohio State spring game, the little bit I did because I'm like starting to trail from spring games. Is everybody talks about the offense mm-hmm. and Chip Kelly getting two million, and all he wants to do is coach ball and Will Howard at quarterback and wide receivers that you know, maybe match that great run of Alabama wide receivers when they had Judy and Ruggs and yeah. Smith and Waddle. Yeah. Ohio State's defense is better than their offense. That's scary. Um, but That's I'm very scary. Telling you right now, it's 647 on the 16th of April. Ohio State's defense is better than their offense. And there you go. There it's you go. a scary idea. I mean, it's a scary concept. Uh, speaking of uh, today and the portal, so are we excited? The transfer portal window is open. Yeah. Are we? I mean, how did we celebrate? Did you get up early? Did you hit refresh? Did you like, man, what Nebraska guy is going to get in the portal? I did not yet, no, because I don't and not necessarily even for Nebraska. I'm just I'm curious if we will see anybody in the college football world that is going to make Oh, it, it looks a like it splash. looks like players that last night were announcing they will be in the portal. There's at least I think some guys that could step in and make an impact, but there may be a handful of guys. It would be a very interesting time for a Nebraska player too right now because now that as you talked about this being the the last opportunity to actually see them from the media standpoint you got another week and a half ish before spring ball wraps up but as we've said before you get an idea especially after a scrimmage last Saturday you get an idea of where you are and what type of opportunities you may or may not have right now I know I was talking to somebody the other day. Said, "Yeah, we you, you won't hear much from Nebraska until after the spring game, right?" Well, not necessarily. Hey, if I was a guy on the fence, and and, and the writing was on the wall, mm-hmm. I would go to Coach Rule and I would say, "Hey, Coach, um, I, I'm going to put my name into the portal, but I'm going to stick it out for spring because yeah. I don't want to cause a commotion. 
can you at least allow me to play a little bit more than usual during the spring game? So I got some tape. They don't have to choose a place by the end of the month. They just have to be in the portal. Right. I would do that. I would just also be curious around here um, if, because, you know, Nebraska is among a few that their spring game is until next Saturday. Mm-hmm. Uh, if a player goes into the portal, like today is open, you can go and watch practice and you, you know, you're, you're looking through your roster and you're like, ah, oh, Bobby and Steve and Mike and, oh, where's Teddy? I don't see Teddy. Where's Teddy at? If somebody puts their name in the portal in the next week or so, what the reaction around here is like, regardless of where they would potentially be on a depth chart. One, I don't think it's. Well, I, I take that back. It depends on who it is. If it's somebody okay, that was, a, they're not going to be a frontline guy. Okay. Uh, if it's one, I don't think it's. I, I don't think it's earth shattering. I, I think. But if you start to get a little run of a few, maybe you get two or three in this next week before there is a spring mm-hmm. game, then I think people start to get a little, a little itchy and scratchy of what's going on. Which I I think I'm not going to put words into your mouth. I know I feel that's just a product of the current system, not the system in Nebraska. That's the product of the current system in college football that when that opens and you you realize you aren't going to have the big contribution that you set out to have going into spring, or going into your time at Nebraska or any other school, why do you have to wait? Why do you have to wait till spring's over with? See, this is why we should do away with the portal and we should have trades. I still, and I think I, it's I, coming hey, one day. I still hey, would love trades. I have been on this since Adrian Martinez left. I think <laughs> right? we already are NFL light. We're going to pay players. I mean, if you are an athletic department and you aren't setting aside 10 to $15 million right now and you're fine with it and you're like, this is where we're going mm-hmm. and we're going to be prepared. If you're not doing that, you're doing it wrong. Yep. We're NFL light. I think we should have trades. Can you imagine how Gosh. great this would be to have trades? Yeah. Like Adrian Martinez wants to leave Nebraska. So the general manager of Nebraska football is shopping him around the country. So instead of him going to Kansas State and Nebraska is left without their starting quarterback, so they've got to go get a quarterback, they are able to acquire maybe a backup redshirt freshman defensive lineman. Mm -hmm. So you have full-on trades. Now, people are scoffing at this, and they're like, these at the end of the day are college kids. I'm telling you here, kids aren't coming – to play college football or basketball for school. It's just the it's reality true. of it. How many times have you thought, wow, I gotta, I wonder what his GPA is? There's a reason <laughs> why when they announce starting lineups, they don't put their majors on there anymore. Okay. <laughs> Gary, because, Gary, because, student but, comes before athlete. Yeah, whatever. Okay. <laughs> athlete ahead of students. Okay. There's 30,000 other students. <laughs> All right, I'm worried about 140 guys that wear helmets to play on Can Saturday. We talk about graduation rate. Let's talk about graduation rate. Yeah. When, when was the last time we did that? Okay. All right. Now, now a little bit tongue in cheek here. Nebraska does observe their academic yes. All-Americans, but you sit, you sit in the coffee shop today going, man, I wonder how Dylan's doing in his first semester in college. <laughs> Hell, Shadir Sanders just went into a classroom for the first time. Didn't have any supplies. He said, you know what? Yeah. I'm going to do this live. Yeah. What are we doing? <laughs> okay. You just come to school, play football. Okay. Get a major in football, but we're NFL light. And you have athletic departments that are putting aside money, and 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 smartly so, because when this happens, it's going to happen. So you got to be prepared. But we could have trades. Do you? Don't you think this would? Look at how exciting this would be for college football and fans to draw them in. Of what can we get for Adrian Martinez? Yes, Adrian. Adrian gives you a, a couple of places he would like to go. The general manager of Nebraska yep. football. Boy, Billy Devaney was a bad. I don't general think you can give him no trade. You can't give him a no trade clause though. Well, maybe if you are like a f- going into your fifth year, I mean, we would be able to start oh, this after COVID because yeah. this is the last go around for yep. COVID kids. Yep. Is he gives you a list of places you would like to go. So you reach out to Chris Kleiman and say, hey, uh, our starting quarterback has an interest in your school. Mm-hmm. Now, you do realize that he has started three years or four years in college. Um, we're going to need a return on this. Maybe you get a player to be named later. Yep. Okay, maybe you get one of their scholarships. Yep, you get you, yeah, you the, get an incoming signing. The 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 possibilities are limitless. How crazy would that be if you you commit to a school, you sign the letter of intent. Now, basically, going to be a contract. Now, you sign that, and right out of the gate, they're like, "Hey, by the way, before you enroll in classes, 
we think we're going to deal you out to Nebraska. No, I don't think you could do that. I, I, think, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think they have to be on campus for a year. They're like a red shirt. Yeah, they have to. Yeah, okay. I, you, you are not eligible to be <laughs> traded in your first year on campus. Yeah, because you're making that yeah. decision. They're not drafting you out of high school. <laughs> okay, so when when Adrian, when you knew the writing was on the wall, that Adrian was going to be parting ways, I had this exact same conversation. A, a, again, more time. About trades? Cheap. Yes. Again, more tongue in cheek. My, my man, we need to make this happen. And then when we talked about this last year, I continue to find it. Yes, it's it's humorous, but the the direction that you see college football going into, it seems like as opposed to a transfer portal, where you could have a little bit more control over this. That if someone's leaving your school, don't you want something in return? Hey, hot stove league. Jordan Addison wants to leave Pitt. He wants to go to USC. He's let it be known. So you contact USC and you're like, hey. We're not gonna we're not gonna trade him right. to USC unless we get back a couple of equivalent first round talent guys. And if and you're so, paying them, and so Lincoln Riley goes, yeah, we have a couple of guys that are underachieving. Here's Bear Alexander, mm -hmm. and so you make a trade. It's like hot stove college it football. Is. It, it, it it and it, here's the thing, unbelievable. Like Pete Thamel would just have like oh, four phones. Oh my gosh, can you imagine that? The 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 Pete tweets during the. I guess we'd have a trade deadline. You would just be making the sound. Here's, like here's, the, here's the part that I'm, yeah, like, like when would the trade deadline be? Would it be end of October? No, you can't do it in season. Yeah. You can't yeah, do it in no, season? No, okay. no in season. It has to be oh, out of season. Come on, yeah. come on let's they, have fun in season. Because they still have to fulfill their obligation as a student. You can transfer those credits. You can still take the online classes at the current place, and then semester comes, you just officially transferred the academic side of it over since and we're separating the two because i think of jordan travis last year in class and an actual physical uh in class see you can you can do that i i think of uh, if you could do in-season trades i think of jordan travis in florida state last year when he gets injured florida state is maybe not overly comfortable with their backup situation and you've got the schools like ohio state and some other schools that is maybe they've played a couple of quarterbacks before they settle it on one you think, hey, you know what? This guy's got experience. He's already played in a game or two. We feel better about his potential fit. Now, this is this is where we're pie in the sky because yeah, this I'm is not, where you're, you're having him I'm, coming I'm, in a I'm, week I'm, and learning I'm learn a system. In season, I think you, it'd you be have really to get fun. your business done out of season. Although I think it'd be a lot of fun. But, but yeah, the the if we're gonna start somewhere and you're doing it out of season, yeah, like the Adrian Martinez one is a perfect example of. You know both parties want a fresh start, but you want to get something out of it, especially for a guy who's been a, a multi-year starting quarterback. That position especially. You don't want to just let him walk out the door and, yeah, we're going to continue to recruit and we're going to continue at the transfer portal. Hell no. Let's make a deal. I saw a staggering stat yesterday because uh, Nebraska basketball got somebody out of the portal uh, yesterday. 37% of the players in the Missouri Valley Conference and 32% of the players in the Summit League Conference are in the portal. That is, wow. Or have already decided where they're going to school. I mean, at some point, we're going to be 50% of it. You know why Nebraska, I don't think, will be super active? One, because that's not how ideally they're building their roster. But uh, we'll get into this with Sam. Danny Kalen, in my opinion, has changed how Nebraska looks at the portal. I'll explain it when we get to our chat with Sam coming up at 730. Uh, update with Jimmy is uh, coming up next. BC and AK uh, around the corner as well. Uh, it is the uh, running of the journalists in uh, Lincoln today. The air horn goes off, the garage door opens, and journalists scatter to find their spot on the field with notebook <laughs> in hand. I'm just trying and to imagine camera around their neck. Who's who leads the pack, and then who's the dirty? Who's the dirty player or dirty players? Who's the lame beer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elbows well, I'm tripping. Not that, I'm not that petty to say it on the air. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, I mean we all we all get along. Oh, of course. Some journalists get together and they play on a softball team. We could be 30 to nothing last night. 30 to nothing. 30 to nothing. Got no hit. It was like the 89. Cap Good Lord. No hit. That had to only last three innings then, I bet. I was, oh, yeah, my gosh. Was, they had the 30 run rule in effect. Does Jack Mitchell have a job this morning? Oh, That's just embarrassing. Oh, yeah. Some other country, Jack would have disappeared already. Yeah. Next thing you know, we find him in the trunk of a car. Maybe the new uniforms, will, once they arrive, maybe that'll no, change. Maybe. Or maybe. Might get a hit. Who they play last night? Doesn't matter. The they Lincoln Bombers. I saw, I saw Brunts tweeted out the twenty-seven Yankees. Yeah, <laughs> at Murder's Row. So okay, I bet those guys had fun. I saw some of their pictures. Boy, they look like they were having fun until the game. That's started. all that matters. Until the game started, and they look like they were enjoying. How it. do you get no hit in softball? The other team had softball. more fun. How does that happen?
What's the guy throwing spitters? Come on. You put snot on the softball? <laughs> Come on. I don't know. They signed up for the wrong league. All of a sudden, they got there and they're playing they, fast yeah, pitch. I wonder, are they in like the open <laughs> league or something? I, it's just supposed to be to an the, exhibition. I don't know what the Lincoln equivalent is to the open league in Omaha, but yeah. <laughs> they're supposed to be in the like the C or the D, like the rec league, and they yeah. got into the ultra competitive one. Uh oh. Sounds like they were in the F. Uh, update with uh, Jimmy's coming up next on 1620 The Zone. More with Gary and Nick after this on 1620 The Zone. Live. From the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. 1620 The Zone. Traffic. From the Pyramid Roofing, time-saving traffic center. Hope your morning is off to a great start. Roads looking good currently. No accidents, obstructions, or any slow-moving traffic to report at this time. Some rain will persist throughout the morning, which may create slick roads in some areas. Best just to proceed cautiously and monitor your speed. And always stay safe and wear that seatbelt. I'm Peter Krenzer. This time-saving traffic was brought to you by Fernando's. Mario Street Tacos or Steak and Chorizo Queso Blanco Enchiladas can only be found in one place. Fernando's, great Mexican food, awesome margaritas, and a wonderful family atmosphere. Fernando's, Omaha's favorite Mexican for more than 30 years. And Doug. Being a spokesperson's easy, kid. Just say, customize and save with Liberty Mutual. Customize and save with Liberty Biberty. That's not it. Let her be mutual. Mm-mm. Liberty musical. Nope. Lumberty um, line. It's two words. Liberty mutual. Got it. Don't not pay at libertymutnoodle.com. Wow. I guess I'll just do it. <clears throat> Only pay for what you need at libertymutual.com. That's a wrap. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Underwritten by Liberty Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates. Thanks for calling Discover. This is Gabby. Hey, Gabby. It's Jennifer Coolidge. Hi. I'm, I'm so glad I reached you at 2 a.m. Oh, of course. Anyone with a Discover card can call and talk to a real person 24-7. Now, how can I help? Yeah, I used my Discover card to buy these yellow pleather pajamas, and I'm just not sure I'm pulling them off. 24-7 U.S.-based customer service. It pays to Discover. Limitations apply. Learn more at discover.com slash credit card. I want to learn how to cook, but I keep ordering takeout. I plan to rearrange my closet, but I stopped after picking the clothes up off the floor. Accomplishing goals is hard, but when your goal is to learn a new language, Babbel makes it easy. In just 15 minutes a day, Babbel's award-winning language learning app will help you start speaking another language. Start having conversations in as little as three weeks. Comment tu t'appelles? Comment tu t'appelles? Vous êtes où? Vous êtes où? Babbel's bite-sized lessons make it easy to learn words and phrases you'll actually use. So when someone asks, How's your French going? You can say, Babbel est amusant et facilite grandement l'apprentissage d'une nouvelle langue. Et cela ne prend que 15 minutes par jour. When you want to really learn another language, it starts with Babbel. Babbel, language for life. Celebrating 10 million subscriptions sold. Now try Babbel for free at Babbel.com. Just go to Babbel.com and start learning a new language today. That's Babbel.com. B-A-B-B-E-L dot com. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than they're worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket, Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor, and Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now, get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC. Terms and conditions apply. Tickets for less. Best seats. Best prices. No service fees. Shop tickets for less dot com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. And we're back. Mornings with Sharp and Hammond. Here's Gary, Nick, and Jimmy on 1620 The Zone. This week's zone deal is for Woodcliffe Restaurant. 
Loaded Omaha's best outdoor patio. It's perfect for a romantic dinner for two. Gary. Or a family dinner. Enjoy all of Woodcliffe's delicious food with a perfect view of Woodcliffe Lake. Don't miss Thursday's weekly special burger or Friday's fish special. With this week's deal, you can get two $25 gift vouchers, a $50 value for just $25 on sale this Friday, April 19th at 9 a.m. Get all the details at 1620thezone.com. Sign up for stuff, too. Yeah, have a romantic yeah. dinner. Yeah, romantic dinner. Yeah. Nice. On the lake. Or never it's beautiful. Mind. Never mind. Lake, yes, nice. Fish. Uh, Nebraska, great in baseball tonight at Haymarket Park. 6.05 first pitch. Lefty matchup to start. Caleb Clark against Eli Nesson. 23-10 and 10 against 26-7. and 7. The weather that's moving through right now should move all the way out by then. It'll be a little windy, but they'll be able to play some baseball. That's all that matters. It's always windy on that game. True. Especially the one in Lincoln. <laughs> and that's where it is. Uh, Jazz Shelley used to be in Lincoln. Well, now she'll be in the WNBA. She was chosen in the third round of the WNBA draft. 29th overall pick, and she's going to the Phoenix Mercury. Not bad. It came just three weeks after the guard played her final game for Nebraska in the second round of the NCAA tournament. It's the first time in 10 years the player went directly from Nebraska's roster to being chosen for the draft. In 2014, ex-Husker Jordan Hooper was chosen 13th overall. More recently, former Huskers Leah Brown and Jessica Shepard transferred out of Nebraska and later were drafted. Omaha third baseman Tyler Bishop named Summit League Baseball Player of the Week to a record-setting Saturday. In a 21-15 win over South Dakota State on Saturday, the great goal line stand to keep the uh, Jackrabbits out of the end zone there at the end. The junior went 6-for-6 six six and became the first Mav to score six runs in a game. He was also the first Mav since 2008 to hit for the cycle and drove in seven runs. Omaha softball finishes their seven-game road stretch as they face Creighton this evening at 5. WNBA Commissioner Kathy Engelbert is pretty confident the league will expand to 16 teams by 2028, and the goal is to bring a 14th team for 2026 with women's basketball booming in popularity or popularity you know it doesn't have to be an nba market omaha has an arena players and fans alike have called for expansion as the wnba's current footprint of 12 teams each with 12 roster spots means the league can accommodate a maximum of 144 players and i remember 12 times 12 equals 144 because i remember the multiplication chart <laughs> that is a league that does not like talent that's for sure not bad really. C.D. Lamb will sit out the Dallas Cowboys voluntary workouts, much like how the Cowboys have set out free agency this year. <laughs> Lamb's, Lamb is awaiting a long-term contract. Good luck, buddy. They ain't giving anything to anybody. Lamb is entering the final year of his rookie deer deal, set to earn a fully guaranteed just under $18 million salary from his fifth-year option. I need a new football team. Team USA is finalizing the 2024 Paris Olympics men's basketball roster that includes several of the generation's iconic players, including LeBron James, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, and Joel Embiid. Team USA Managing Director. This will make you feel old. Grant Hill is keeping one roster slot open ahead of a July training camp and exhibition games in Las Vegas. USA Basketball is planning to for himself. Announce. Maybe he, he could be the Jackie Moon do it. player manager. I bet Leitner could still suit up and mm -hmm. get in there. Uh, they're planning to formally announce the 11 man roster that includes Anthony Davis, Devin Booker. Oh, I'm going to be ready for Anthony Davis to get hurt every other game. Uh, <laughs> Anthony Edwards. All right, Ant Man. And Jason Tatum. Uh, after I killed him, I'm so glad Ant Man has recovered to make the Olympics. Drew Holiday and Bam out of bio along with Tyrese Halliburton. It's a pretty good team. They look forward to kicking everybody's ass in July. And I do love an Olympic year. Yet, uh, hopefully, Japan and the U.S. play. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, shout out to Keisei. Keisei right. gets drilled. Mm -hmm. He like, got engaged yes, yesterday or over the weekend. <laughs> yeah, we're talking. <laughs> uh, tonight's the play in on the West. Uh, yes. I got the Lakers, and I got a, my, my head over heart. I think Golden State. Uh, the Kings have limped into the postseason. Just, it's not as. Struggles offensively. They got some injuries. Malik Monk isn't going to play. You still got Curry. The memory of Game Seven last year. Yeah, and they need that O2 team to walk in for one night. Uh, yeah, Chris Webber was back in Sacramento last week. He's doing. He has a book. Oh, uh, is it a tell-all? Uh, no. I think it's uh, just kind of like his journey. Can't wait for the chapter on Game Six against the Lakers in two thousand two. Yeah. You know, this will be the first night that uh, Zion has been in the postseason. Like, yeah, because yeah, he you didn't know, play when they... Yeah, the, mm -hmm. the Pels have been fairly successful. Boy, they have. They were going to be not in the play-in, and they just, at the end of the year, Brandon Ingram got hurt, and that didn't help. But yeah, this will be the first time he's played in the postseason. Who should I adopt, boys, in the playoffs? Any of the top three I'm, I'm leading on you guys. Well, I guess you got to look east, too. You don't have an NBA team? 
the Bulls. But that's not going to. They're not, in the play. Yeah, no, that's not going to happen. You don't think that uh, they're one of the play-in teams that could make a run to the conference finals? No. Like the Miami Heat, who went a step further and into the NBA finals? No, I don't have. You have no faith in the Bulls. I have no faith in the Bulls. They're I haven't playing had faith the, the god-awful since. Hawks tomorrow night. Yeah, but the once, they, once they actually get into the the real playoffs, I have no faith in the Bulls. I haven't had faith in the Bulls since actually when Fred was there in his first year. That was the last As time I really got into the Chicago Bulls when they. <laughs> And it's a uh, <laughs> rough day for you because uh, today is the anniversary of the last time that the uh, great uh, Michael Jordan uh, finished up with the Washington Wizards. Oh, 21 God. years ago today. Oof. Tonight. Hell? that I just wish that never happened. Uh, but the Lakers playing tonight. Uh, give some flowers to LeBron at the age of 39. He finished up because they played the Pelicans the other day in the final day of the regular season. He went 28, 11, and 17. For a guy that's 39, he was a better three-point shooter this year than Steph. Wow. I mean, the, LeBron, so in in terms of like the best average scoring average in the NBA, 35 or older guys, there's Alex English, and then there's Curry, LeBron, and KD this year. Yeah, I mean, still Alex weird English. to me. Still weird to me that Curry and Durant are that are like mid 30s. But LeBron had a, LeBron quietly had a really good year for being 39 years old. Mm-hmm. They have, they, they have, Probably eh, Zion might sneak in there and maybe McCollum, but I would say four of the top six players in that play in the night are Lakers. I expect the Lakers to win that game and then have to play Denver or do they tank so that they can maybe get the Thunder? Get the Thunder. Denver, I, you know, or they could both Lakers hey, and Warriors lose Den- dressed up for the Olympics. Denver is scary. <laughs> But Denver has more tread on the tires this year than they've had in the past. Jokic has played 200 more minutes yeah. than he played last year. It adds up at the end, too. Mm-hmm. You'll see it, especially if they get in the finals yeah, and they just got nothing left. A as previous Boston year being them. in the finals, too. Another year being in the finals in that extended time. Uh, that's, that's, I guess, the, the drawback of being Someone so damn good and playing that. late in the, the season every year. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Jimmy. A couple of uh, emails here into the Equitable Bank inbox. Uh, the, the discussion about cartoon elephants to begin the show. Yes, that's what happened. Mm-hmm. Um, Chris writes in about Snuffleupagus. So if you were not a Sesame Street person, Big Bird had an imaginary friend. I mean, yep. we, we, I had an imaginary friend for a while. I played baseball with him in the backyard. Uh, it actually helped my play-by-play skills. Was his name Shiloh? And yes. by God, Shiloh let you win every time? No, it was not Shiloh. <laughs> uh, but Big Bird had, you know, people didn't think Snuffleupagus was real. And then the mid-80s. They shocked every kid in America by revealing Snuffleupagus. Now, it's like I, don't, sense. I, I don't think Snuffleupagus comes around very often on Sesame Street. I also don't think I watch Sesame Street as often as I used to, mm-hmm. um, especially what they did to Bert and Ernie. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Snuffleupagus here. Um, Chris says, I told everyone he was absolutely not an elephant. No ears, no tusks. Sesame Street 101 right there, fellas. That but he's very, got the trunk. That's though. a blasphemy because I think in the world of identification, he is an elephant. Yeah. yeah what is he? He may not look like the regular elephant, um, but he has a lot of elephant capabilities. Yeah. And there, if he says he's an elephant, who are we to judge that he's not? Also, most elephants are sad unless they are Alabama's mascot. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. The, the Snuffleupagus, though. Elephants are sad. That's true. It, the, the, I'm sorry. The, the, the trunk is the dead giveaway. Maybe, maybe you're born without tusks. Maybe it's an unfortunate. Uh, birth defect or maybe just your ears aren't tusk. noticeable yeah, but maybe you're anti fleetwood mac yeah <laughs> or anti usc band because of that yes. song. uh the lego maniac about <laughs> trades here so as the portal window opens today and i just pete thamel is just like ripping him off uh a guy that started 12 games for texas a&m hates his athletic director so he's in the portal. <laughs> oh wait a minute doesn't say that i'm sorry <laughs> that's not in the pete tweet Started uh, 12 games over uh, two seasons. Like like TJ Bowlers, who you know Nebraska had some interest in out of high school, has two years left to play as a defensive line from Wisconsin. He's in the portal. Uh, there, are, there are some intriguing names. I wonder if this will pick up uh, as the day goes on. But instead of portal activity, I want trades. I think we should have trades. Mm-hmm. So we used Adrian Martinez as an example. I said, if you trade Adrian Martinez to Kansas State – then Kansas State makes a contribution to Nebraska's NIL fund. That'll get them back. So they have more money to acquire players. I could see that. Yeah, cash considerations. There you go. I could see instead of a player to be named later, yep. you trade Adrian Martinez to Kansas State for cash. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Keep your touchdown. This, this sounds yep. like one of the greatest ideas ever in, I agree. The, in the history of 
college athletics. I just noticed. Should we? Hat. Should we get? Should, yeah. I'm, Very nice. I'm beam team today. Mm-hmm. Should we? Should we expand it? Like college basketball is insane right now. Yep. I mean, it's it's a whole different world on how you construct a roster and rosters are changing and we're caught up in, you know, watching Ohio State film to see what Creighton might get, or I'm watching a guy named Raleigh. I'm thinking, man, do I do I need to go all the way back and watch his first year in college? I mean, it in college basketball, and then we're seeing programs are hiring general managers. Yep. We could expand this. Oh yeah. Every college program, instead of the portal, we just have trades. Mm-hmm. Some teams will trade better than others. Others uh, will get fleeced. It'll just be yeah. like the real world. Exactly. And the best part about it is, as long as you have the right people in place to do your negotiating, your general managers, that they know what they're doing, they know the market, and they're able to be a strong salesman, you're going to get something out of that. Right now, you don't get anything out of it. Guy leaves, gal leaves. Okay, it's up to you to find somebody on the transfer portal or just recruit better from the the high school ranks. Now, you get something in return. You you gain back more control. I would think we may be getting to a point uh when we start paying players and you know the the NIL collective look a little bit different that there is uh loyalty clauses. Like if you stay here yeah. a year, you get a certain amount of money. Mm-hmm. If you stay here two years, you get a certain amount of money. A retention bonus? If, yes. If you stay here three years. So we're basically rewarding you for loyalty. Yeah. And you should. That's what they should do in radio. <laughs> you get the retention bonus. How many how many years you've been here now? Here's some Oscars. They won <laughs> the wing bracket. Am I coming up on twelve. I think it's twelve. Uh yeah, because yeah, when I got cupcakes. when I got here, you were uh, you're big, on ten. Big contract negotiation yeah. coming up for Mr. Re- Sharp. Retention bonus. Uh Terry writes in the <laughs> Equitable Bank <laughs> inbox. Retain and reward. That that's how it should be used. I agree. A friend retain, and I actually talked about this. Retain and uh, reward. Mm-hmm. It's in all aspects of life. All aspects of life, man. I mean, who knows? Maybe there is a starter at Nebraska that walks into Rule's office today and says, I'm thinking about leaving. What do you got for me? Mm-hmm. And rule goes, oh, no, he'd go, uh, don't let the door hit you on that. Yeah. yeah. Like leaving for lunch or like leaving <laughs> Nebraska? <laughs> uh, so Terry writes in about, uh, if, if you have not seen it, it was just a woeful performance last night out of the gate by the Jack Mitchell All-Stars. <laughs> Wolf? They got, they got <laughs> no hit in three innings. That's just, I left that on. out of my update. I'm hey, sorry, guys. Yeah. They, they left. Did anybody I, strike out? Uh, they all did. Yeah, because I looked at the box score. Oh, man. Well, so- uh. Hopefully it was a called strike. Our Monday buddy struck out. Oh, in his oh, lone appearance. oh, did he swing and miss or did he get uh, I, did he go I, down looking? That I don't know and okay. I don't want to know. I, I need to find out. So did he wear cleats? when I worked with him, his name was James Kind, but he's on 96 Kicks in Lincoln, uh, JP. He's the mm. PA voice for Nebraska men's basketball. Good dude. He was the pitcher. Boy. He got shelled? Well, I mean, he was their only pitcher. They lost 30 to nothing. He threw over 200 pitches. <laughs> That's just... That is woeful manager slash general manager of Jack Mitchell to to I mean to hang, yeah. JP out there for that long. Yeah, that's just that's ridiculous. You do that mid season maybe to, to teach someone a lesson to it wasn't be able even to throw a strikes. Game. But yeah, I mean season opener you got to you got to preserve that confidence. See, I, I'd, I'd be getting up this morning and the first thing I'd do I'd, I'd either have guys in the portal or I would be looking for guys <laughs> in the portal in the under fifty <laughs> softball league in Lincoln. How many airs do they have? They only had three. Oh, that's even worse. Does Jack need a GM? Oof. Because if he's coaching, you got to have somebody to be like the right hand man mm-hmm. acquiring. Yeah, so they, well, especially when you're on the field, it may be too. too much for him. I mean, he may be overwhelmed. Yeah, but you know, I mean, they they always say you make your best improvements between game one and game two. That's I, true. I agree. So maybe they only get beat seventeen nothing. Uh, Terry says there was a local men's softball team in the '80s <laughs> whose shtick was losing games. Huh? That's kind of like the Omaha Lancers when they started. Remember the Omaha Lancers were what zero and forty six in their first year. They got a bunch of attention in Sports Illustrated. Yeah, but I don't think they tried to lose those games. Uh, they lost every game, but had fun doing it. <laughs> Win or <laughs> lose, they still boo. Hey, anything anything worth doing is worth doing right. Their team name was Fubar. Oh! They finally won a game, but immediately protested <laughs> and said they used an illegal player. Most of those guys were actuaries at the at the major insurance company in <laughs> Omaha, so they so you know they were a bit off. <laughs> That is a great <laughs> shtick. That is awesome. So they won, and then they up. protested their own. You know what? 
<laughs> we finally found a team that's worse than us. Um, that can't be. We got a ringer. Or you can you could always say, hey, we use an illegal bat. That bat was not regulation. I love the honesty. Improved. But I also love, <laughs> man, I love the game of you're trying not <laughs> to win. Reason. Yeah. There was no it. reward for tanking no. back in the day. It's not like you got the first overall pick at Kelly, you know, Kelly Park or whatever. Yeah. Kelly, what is it called? Kelly, Kelly Field. Field. Kelly Field. Kelly Field. Or Seymour. Do they, do they think I still play games at Seymour? Which, by the way, at Kelly Field, I once uh, I went to watch uh, a former co-worker play softball. We used to have a big softball team here. Like really? Stacy and Damon. They, all, they were like oh, yeah. big in the I, softball I, world. I played a long time ago in a co-ed um, league with Stacy. She's good. So I went to watch him, and I noticed uh, a guy that was uh, you need a plus one. Mm -hmm. Like a guy that would just hang around, yes. wasn't attached to a team. Oh, yeah. Then he'd be like, hey, you guys need an extra? Yep. I'm available. And he would just go from field to field. Yeah. He'd play like four games a night. Gary, it was the weirdest thing. When I, when I came back from Columbus, I've been 13. I played on a men's team and then I played on a co-ed team. And the same guy was there, whether we had men's league or co-ed league night, every night. And he would come by. If And so there were, I think that we might have had to use, I know the men's league, yeah. we had to use him once or twice. He, and he was decent. He wasn't bad, but what a what a weird life. No, you, I hey, don't know. I don't know what you do I, during hey, the day, great, but then you just great, show up. It's a great idea. You're new in Omaha, but you I don't like, know if he was though. Like playing slow pitch softball, just go and hang out at softball complexes around town. I and, don't know if he was new, or like you know, like beach volleyball places, sand volleyball places. Yeah. You know, you you want to meet people, and you just hang out. But I saw this guy, and he like drifted. He would like go and play a game, and then he'd say, "Hey, thanks. Yeah. Hey, you know, you ever need somebody? Yeah. Give me a call." Yeah, then he gets a number. And then he'd go over like to another place and be like, you know, just kind of hang around yeah. and they'd be like, oh, we don't have no, we're playing code. We don't have enough guys. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm yeah. And boom, the guy was out there. And I'm like, that is, that's a good move there. And there's usually a few of to meet them people. too. I, there should be, a, there should be an app for that. See, you're, you're not wrong, <laughs> Gary, but I don't, the, the gentleman that I remember, mind you, this was over 10 years ago, was socially awkward. <laughs> Didn't say a lot. He wasn't overly engaging. It was almost like it was his mission to be there to see how many games he could play. And I don't think his his sole purpose was to be social and to make new friends. I think it was just for the love, the pure love of the game. God love him. Well, I mean, Billy Chappell. weird. Billy Chappell did both of those. That's true. It's kind of yeah. weird. I'm just it's a good I, movie. I, I, again, you're right. In in theory, if you're new to town, all that yeah makes sense, but. I'm not sure if he was, and he wasn't really engaging. Big slow pitch softball town. I've come to know it is like we're like really good teams, um, and 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 very very competitive. I've I've witnessed. Oh, and you'll get from time to time people that you remember in college baseball that will show up on this random yeah. co-ed team or a men's league team, and you're thinking, really. Should I be throwing this guy? The guy is uh, one of my buddies. Got war one. I, I thought he was. I thought he broke his back. He smoked one up the middle, and he wore it just on his butt cheek well enough to probably save him from some serious damage. Uh, he was a former closer for Nebraska, Jensen. Yeah, Brett Jensen. Yeah, Brett Jensen. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we we're just like. And then there was a couple other guys that once we realized it was Brett Jensen, we started looking at other dudes that were playing the outfield. And we started recognizing people. Jesus. And it was a co-ed team. Yeah. So that's where Jack's got to go with his team. Like any former athlete that has like appeared on the radio, yeah. they're eligible to play on his team. Mm -hmm. I think you got to make some moves. I, I don't think you can stay. If you could be 30 to nothing. I mean, you got to shake things up. Yeah, you can't. He you probably can't. went to the office last night and began. You can't working. run it. You can't run it back. Yeah. When's their next game? I think, uh, you, I think they play every Monday. Every Yeah. Okay. Probably so they got Monday. one week to yeah. kind of. Yeah. So our RPD Mark is on the team. Mm -hmm. Did Mark? Well, I guess they got no hit. So I was going to say to Mark wear the collar, but apparently ev hit. everybody wore the collar. Thirty to nothing. How do you, I, I'm still just amazed how you get no hit in slow pitch softball? Well, guys, uh, to, <laughs> I guess when you only play three innings, <laughs> to but add some positive perspective because I, I'm the positive person here. Uh, in 1989, the Steelers lost to the Browns 51 to nothing in week one. The Browns and Steelers then went from there. The Steelers got them back later in the season. Yeah. And then the Steelers went on to have a good season and get to the divisional round where they blew a game against Denver. And then Denver beat Cleveland the next week. But the point is, you can still turn it around after an awful week one. So what was a worse performance um, 
Chicago State versus Nebraska baseball or Ooh. the fighting Jack Mitchells last night in Slopers softball? Uh, Chicago State actually scored some runs. That's true. Oh, yeah. There you go. That is true. That's like asking which team will finish worse <laughs> in Major League Baseball. Does it matter? Well, because I went on FanDuel today. Yeah. You can get Miami as plus 2,500 to have the worst record in baseball. Mm. And that's that's like the worst. I'm thinking, have you not watched the White Sox? Yeah. White Sox got shut out again last night. Seth Lugo. Awesome. How great was a yeah. fantasy baseball pickup by me for Seth Lugo? Who regressed to the mean? Uh, <laughs> but he's been pretty good when he pitches against the White Sox. Mm. The White Sox are terrible. Yeah. They got shut out for the sixth time last night in 16 game. Yeah. They are awful. Or was this At least the Marlins like have a chance that they their bullpen last night blew it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you can get plus 2,500 that the Marlins will have the worst record in baseball. Yeah, keep ahead Oakland of the out of ahead of the White Sox. Keep Oakland out of that category right now too. They got seven wins. Hey, they've played well. They've got the they've got the best record in the Bay Area. Yeah, they got a better record than the Giants. Yeah, Colorado's still pretty. It's like bad. 1989, the bad version. I I lose zero sleep over the White Sox being awful. Same. Where was this? Big, 19 big fan ago? of that. Bring yeah. back Ozzy Gian. Yeah. Still bad. Oh yeah, you need to you need to got to rattle Brzezinski. some cages. Oh yeah. AJ Persinski. John Cangelosi. Yeah. AJ Persinski said, "Chump." Jermaine Die. Harold Baines. Oh, Daryl Boston. Oh, yeah. Go Greg Luzinski. Yeah. Ron Karkavice. Ron Kittle. <laughs> Harold Baines could swim. Jerry it. Hairston. God, I'm Steve to... Trout. See, every time I think of a White Sox, you're just you're rattling. You're doing great. Um, WGN was the best. Even when the White Sox were on, and I was like, "Damn it, I thought this it was the is Cubs a collection today. of the great '83 White Sox team, nice. all the way to their '05 yep. World Series when they were wearing like blue and red. Those hey, uniforms were, were great. Playing at Comiskey Park. Mm-hmm. Was Bull Luzinski with them in the '80s, or was he in? Yes, the no, no, okay. he was with them. So I have a. It's a team collection, and these were, I think, mid '80s to early '90s of each team in Major League Baseball. I discovered this baseball card collection in the move. I didn't even realize it made the last move. And it's in this little plastic baseball and it's got these dividers. And I found the White Sox. I found the Twins, the Royals. I got Bo Jackson Future Star cards. I got some really good things I got to look through. I mean, I need to bring these in because then we could just start talking about random. And I talk random Milwaukee Brewer players, Minnesota Twins, Chicago White oh, Sox. Gorman Thomas, Robin Young, Paul Molitor, Ra- oh, there you go. Harvey's Wallbangers. Uh, uh, Mark uh, right fielder. Uh, I'll think of his name like later. When you, you think Cecil Cooper, see when I think of random yeah. when I think of random marks in Jim the eighties, I think of Mark Gubazow with the Royals. Nice Ted nice. Simmons, mm-hmm. Raleigh Fingers, mm-hmm. Pete Vukovic, who we thought you saw uh, Raleigh Fingers not that yeah. long ago. Turned out not to be him. Kids Pete, turned out to Pete be Ron Vukovic. Golden's dad. <laughs> um, all right, uh, <laughs> Sam McEwen's coming up next. Rudy Law, <laughs> oh, that's a good poll. Guys, name Rusty Coots. You know the great Rusty Coots uh, was an outfielder on yeah. that '83 White Sox World Series team. I mean, the guy, the guy, I feel real bad that we've gone this far. We're talking about that team, Carlton Fisk. Well, yeah. See, he's not to me not a random dude though. But yeah, we're naming. Yeah, but, but like like frontline guys. Yeah, I yeah. mean, like I almost mentioned Tom Pachorek before I mentioned Carlton Fisk. Ooh. Maybe even throwing a, maybe even throwing in a Lamar Hoyt, a Dennis Lamp. How about a Britt Burns? Richard Dots Dotson was a really good pitcher before his arm blew up. And they had Floyd Bannister from the left side. Dick Tidro. <laughs> Dick Tidro was intimidating. He became a scout. He was a scout for the Giants. <laughs> he, he didn't like my dad. <laughs> so they didn't get along. And I'm like, man, dad. I said, I said, Pops, you don't get along with Dick Tidro? Who doesn't get along with yeah. Dick Tidro? I, not get I don't even know the guy. I'm sure he just seems like a really nice dude. Dick Tidro. <laughs> All right. Uh, also on that team was Julio Take Me on a Sea Cruise. Well done. And Tony Bernazard. Played second base. He had a little duster. Managed by Tony LaRussa. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, you know who the third base coach was? No. Jim Leland. Oh. oh yes. I just wow. picture him firing up a heater on third base. That's amazing. All right. Sam McEwen is going to join us next. We'll talk some football. We'll talk some – maybe we'll mix in a basketball, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll kick it off with uh, Nebraska Creighton baseball uh, tonight. Pretty important game. The weather is kind of hit or miss. I thought it was going to be out of here. Hey, it White Owl Roker over there. You told oh, me that it was going to be out of here. It do we, should. Do we still have chances of, of rain tonight? It looks like it's... Did it go up again? Oh. Uh, it just looks like it might might rain throughout the day. Oh, no. Super! And wind? That would be fun. For the love of Jim Kern. Might, be, might be a late night for me tonight. Uh, well, okay. Hmm? 
for the love of Vance Law. <laughs> Vance yeah, Law, former Vance Law. Uh, head coach at BYU, played uh, in uh, Lincoln in a regional. Vance Law, Jesus. part of the uh, 89 NL pennant team with the Cubs, right? Yeah. yeah. Vance Law in yeah. the 80s played in... Uh, the boys of Zimmer. Played region. with the White Sox, but then he went yeah. on to be the uh, head baseball coach at oh, BYU. For the, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, oh, you wouldn't know Mike Squires, <laughs> who played third base as a left-hander. I could do this all day. I know you can. Oh, I enjoy it. <laughs> all right. Uh, Sam McEwen uh, joins us uh, next. Uh, BC and then uh, AK. It's all initials day. Sammy Mack, BC, AK. Sounds like a uh, 80s band that would be it playing does. outside of Comiskey Park on the south side after a victory <laughs> over the Kansas City Royals back in the day. It's uh, Mornings with Sharp and Hanley and Jimmy on 1620 The Zone. NBA play in tournament begins tonight. You've got the Lakers as a slight favorite. In New Orleans, you've got Golden State as a slight favorite on the road at Sacramento, and you've got FanDuel in your life. So, new customers right now on FanDuel. You can play the way into the play-in with 150 bucks. Just place any $5 bet, and you'll get $150 in bonus bets, win or lose tonight and tomorrow night used while you bet the NBA playoffs. Yeah, you can look at point spreads. You can also look at individual performances or even team totals. A amount of three-pointers made in this one between the Warriors and the Kings. Maybe Lakers, Pelicans with the over-under first basket score. However you want to play tonight in the play-in games between the Lakers and the Pelicans, the Warriors and the Kings, you could do that at FanDuel. Just go to FanDuel.com, use the promo code ZONE, and get started. That's FanDuel.com slash ZONE. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. 21 plus, 21 plus president in Iowa. First online, real money wager only. $10 first deposit required bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem. Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Gary Sharp, Nick Hanley, and Jimmy Chavez. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley. Weekdays 6 to 10. On 1620 The Zone. At 1620thezone.com. You get a lot of junk in your inbox. This one, not junk. Not junk at all. 1620 The Email. Exclusive content, contests, other stuff probably. Subscribe today at 1620thezone.com. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV Newswatch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Strong to severe storms possible Tuesday morning, mainly before 10 a.m. in the metro. We'll see some clearing through the middle of the day with windy conditions persisting, then more scattered showers and storms possible in the afternoon into the evening. Highs in the mid-70s. I'm meteorologist Sean Everson from KETV News Watch 7. The Zone Hotline is powered by 42 Degrees. The Source. By your mom's house. 1620 The Zone. Traffic. From the Pyramid Roofing, time-saving traffic center. Road conditions looking pretty good as of right now. No accidents or obstructions to report. Traffic is moving at a nice pace. It may pick up a little bit in the next hour or so. There is potential for longer delays due to the rain and weather this morning. Just give yourself a little extra time. Watch that speed. Stay safe. And remember, wear that seatbelt. I'm Peter Krenzer. Time-saving traffic is brought to you by Pyramid Roofing. If you've seen the light trucks with Rufus, the spotted dog, then you know about Pyramid Roofing. Spring's almost here. Replace your siding, windows, roof, or gutters. Call Pyramid Roofing at 402-502-9300 or visit PyramidRoof.com. Never settle for less. Get more with Murphy Tractor. Each of our 29 locations offers new, used, and rental John Deere construction equipment an extensive parts inventory, as well as other complimentary products. We also have a full team of Capstone certified technicians with field service capabilities. Let Murphy Tractor be your first choice for your construction equipment needs. Visit us online at murphytractor.com. And Doug. Being a spokesperson is easy, kid. Just say, customize and save with Liberty Mutual. Customize and save with Liberty Biberty. That's not it. Let it be mutual. Mm -mm. Liberty musical. Nope. Lumberty um, line. It's two words. Liberty mutual. Got it. Don't not pay at LibertyMuttNoodle.com. Wow. I guess I'll just do it. <clears throat> Only pay for what you need at LibertyMutual.com. That's a wrap. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Underwritten by Liberty Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates. When you keep a car for a long time, 
it becomes a classic. When you keep your air conditioner for a long time, it becomes, well, let's just say it doesn't get better with age. Call Standard Heating and Air Conditioning and have your old air conditioner checked out. If it's needed, you can have a brand new carrier air conditioner installed in no time with fast and easy financing. When the other companies send salesmen, Standard sends qualified technicians. It's just part of the way we do the things we do. Carrier, turn to the experts. What does Saul's loan on? Almost everything, like jewelry. Gold chains, bracelets, earrings, wedding rings, and high-end watches, guns, electronics, $10 to $50,000, super fast and easy with no credit check. Saul's loads on almost everything. My taco pie is really something special, and it can't be imitated. It starts with my zesty taco sauce, seasoned beef, onions, lettuce, tomatoes, mounds of cheddar, and mozzarella cheese. This pie is the real deal. For a limited time, build your own feast with a specialty pizza, like my taco pie, a one-topping pizza, and cinnamon monkey bread. Do yourself a favor and order. Today, Godfather's Pizza. Do it. Hey, baseball fans, join the Blur Tailgate at Hilton Omaha this June for our 12th annual hospitality event during the College Baseball Championship Series. Book an experience for your clients or employees with an inclusive bar, buffet, TVs, music, and tailgate games. Secure your spot today and let Blur Events take care of all the work so you can enjoy the day. Plus, we're just steps away from Charles Schwab Field. Visit BlurEvents.com to book your group, buy tickets, or learn about sponsorships. That's BlurEvents.com, your college baseball and football tailgate destination. Now, back up mornings with Sharp and Hamlet on 1620 The Zone. All right, let's welcome on a good friend from the Omaha World Herald, Sam McEwen. Good Tuesday morning. What's the weather like in uh, uh, Lincoln? It rolled through about two hours ago. Mm -hmm. So, got a nice wake up call at 5 30. Mm hmm. Uh, you know, kind of like, a, I mean, it was strong too. A lot of rain, not, not much else, no hail, no wind, but, uh, I think my grass grew an inch over the, <laughs> over, overnight. I should have mowed yesterday and now I'm stuck, you know, for another day. So I'm smart. Well, it looks like here is the, uh, it's getting lighter outside. We are getting a deluge. So good for everybody. Um, uh, a little bit uh, later this morning, it'll be the final time to watch uh, practice before the spring game. Let's start with baseball, and we hope this game can be played tonight over at Haymarket Park. Um, who ne who needs it more, Creighton or Nebraska? Oh, great question. Um, I, I mean, right now both are, I think, two seats in the uh, in the projection. Um, you know, anytime you go below a two in the projections of the of the uh, the thing, then you, you're basically on you're on the bubble. Because there aren't a ton of threes uh, who are who are at largest. There might be five or six of them. So, uh, you know, honestly, I mean, I, I feel like Creighton kind of knows what it's going to be and 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 uh, needs to do better in its league. I think Nebraska might need it a little bit more just to to break the, mm -hmm. you know, to break sort of the streak of of where they're at. Creighton's got two really good games against Coastal Carolina next week. And so they have an opportunity mm -hmm. to win two in their park next week against the team that's going to be at least the two and maybe, you know, if they have a strong finish of the season, be one of those top 16 teams. And so Creighton's got more opportunities. Uh, Nebraska doesn't have a, a whole bunch more from a non-conference perspective. Um, so, you know, I think it's important for Nebraska. Uh, for, for Creighton, too, you know, I, I Creighton has never been – Terrific in the Big East, and I'm not sure why some of the teams they play are badly overmatched in yeah. terms of resources. Um, but they've never been. Creighton's always been like the, the second or third best team in the league, but they've they've rarely been the best. I mean, they're going to play a team this weekend that basically plays at a high school stadium. And mm -hmm. you know, I'm I'm of the yeah. belief, and you guys can't say this, but I can't. That the Big East should disband its baseball league. They should get rid of it. And, 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 and do away with it and move on and, and let whatever schools want to keep playing baseball, probably not Villanova, let them go to whatever league they want to go to. Creighton could go to the Big 12 and it could survive and it could, it could flourish in the Big 12. As it stands right now, as compiled, Big East baseball is not. It's not all that helpful to anybody, uh, including Creighton, which has to travel this weekend to a high school stadium in Philadelphia. Hey, I. I mean, we, we can say that, that they should disband. We are, we are not fans of Big East baseball. No. But it just shows you that 
you know, and, and we're about to go into a, a situation with Big Ten baseball where you're going to have four teams way out on the West Coast, and I wonder yeah. how many curfew games will happen yeah. around the around the conference. I I I wonder if someday we go in the non revenue producing sports like football, men's and women's basketball, maybe volleyball. We go to more of a regional conference where mm -hmm. Creighton and Nebraska, or, you know, Creighton, Wichita State, they can all be together where they can cut down expenses in terms of travel yeah. and then also be with like-minded programs that spend money and want to be successful at baseball. Yep. yep. Amen. And, you know, I think that would be a rising tide that lifted the three boats of the programs you just mentioned for sure. Um, I don't know that Wichita loves where it's at, although it's in a better league than, than Nebraska or Creighton. Um, you know, I, I think that would be good for everybody involved. Um, but I mean, you know, uh, the Big Ten might get a lot better. You never know. Uh, you know, obviously USC and UCLA, when you remove them from the Pac-12, are they going to become, you know, more powerful teams? They might. I don't I don't know. And then, you know, Oregon's, mm -hmm. Oregon's going to bring it a little bit. So, you know, you never know how, mm -hmm. how things will turn out. There's really nothing stopping the Big Ten. I'll be honest with you. There's nothing stopping the Big Ten from inviting Oregon State and Washington State to the, big, to the league in baseball. And just saying, you know what? We're going to go to a 20 team league. We're going to have 10 teams over here. We're going to have 10 teams over here. The teams on the West Coast never have to go to Rutgers in Maryland and vice versa. And there's a template for it. There's, they already do it in hockey with Notre Dame and I don't, I can't remember MIT or John Hopkins is in La John Hopkins. Yeah, lacrosse. Yep. Bring Oregon State and Washington State into the league for baseball. Oregon State will immediately make the league better. It's a win-win for everybody. I, you know, they don't have to constrain themselves to these member schools. They're willing to do it for Notre Dame and Johns Hopkins. They should do it for baseball. And then you have a ten-team league. You have two ten-team divisions, and those teams on the West Coast they can all play each other. You know, and if you if you look at that, then then you're looking at fifteen of their whatever twenty-seven games are on the West Coast, and then they play some teams. They play you know Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota. Uh, whoever else you want to throw in those the uh, the the fourth team it can be northwestern for all i care since wisconsin doesn't play baseball or illinois and there you go and you don't ever have to worry about these teams going to rutgers which is something usc i'm sure doesn't want to hear nobody does uh sam the you mentioned the resume part of this matchup too I, I'm, I'm thinking about now that we've reached a little bit beyond the halfway point of the college baseball season, and if you are Nebraska and you're trying to put yourself in a position to where you could be a top 16 seed, if you're Creighton and you're looking like you don't have to necessarily go to the Big East tournament and win that to get an automatic bid, the part of tonight's game based on how each team is playing, I, I'm still leaning towards Nebraska based on what has really been a major improvement, but it has eluded them lately and that's on the mound that's throwing strikes and it, you remember when they won the big 10 regular season in the covid year there was that three game sweep at home against rutgers now they didn't get swept this last weekend but they lose that series and that was a big turning point it, it, is, is that what you need to see tonight with what this team looks like that you can look back at that rutgers series and say that again was a big turning point for this nebraska team basically saying this game from a mental standpoint, seems like it might be bigger for Nebraska as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Nebraska's pretty good at home. That helps them too. Mm -hmm. I think they need to they need to have, um, you know, a, an effective. I don't know. I mean, I, I I think Nebraska struggles at times with midweek games because of focus. Um, I think Creighton wants very badly uh, to win this series you know, the season series. I think Nebraska's always, but, uh, but has been, but you know, Nebraska will play well tonight. I think, I think they'll, you know, they'll pitch well on the mound. They're better at home. Nebraska struggled with the, with the midweek road games. Uh, that's, that's been an area of concern. They, you know, they, they beat Wichita one out of two, lost to KU last week, played poorly at KU. Um, people who listen to the pick six podcast, I, I kind of thought they would struggle last week. I I, mm. I, I kind of did. I, I thought they'd lose three out of four, to be honest with you. Mm. And some of it's just, just the, the rhythm of the season. You know, I, I think you, you go out to the East Coast and you're playing a bunch of games and you're 
it's just it's just not easy. That's part of the that's part of the problem with the Big Ten is that the the teams are not very good um, early in the year because they got to go you know 800 miles to go play a baseball game. Yeah. And yet later in the season, um, when they're playing at home in their park and it's 57 degrees or whatever, they're hard to beat. Yeah. You know, and so Rutgers got left out of the NCAA tournament a couple of years ago because basically they lost the game to UNO that they probably shouldn't have played, but but they did. And Big Ten teams would be better off playing fewer games. They they, they would be better off simply sitting weeks out um, during February and whatever, and just saying, yeah, we're just not going to play baseball this week. And and for whatever reason, coaches feel compelled to to drag their teams down to play. You know, whatever you know, mid-level team that, that's probably going to end up going 27 and 30. They always go down there and play them and hope we win, and then they don't, and then everything gets, their ratings get depressed. They'd be better off just sitting at home and, you know, swinging in a cage. From an RPI standpoint, they're just, you know, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of a catch-22 that I think they hope USC, UCLA, Oregon, and Washington help solve for them because those schools can practice more than the Big yeah. Ten school can. Sam McCune of the World Herald joining us. So I'm watching here. There is a, a recruiting website that has a Portal Palooza live stream going on right now. I hear coaches that say, I have a plan in the portal. There are players that are jumping into the portal. But around here, why does it feel like it's so muted, the excitement or the dread of the portal season opening? Great question. Um, you know, I think I think it has something to do with with uh, Nebraska having a strategy that keeps a lot of guys here. Uh, they have sort of an NIL strategy that maybe can keep some guys here. It's still very early in the Matt Rule era. So, you know, I, I think there's a bunch of guys that haven't necessarily uh, written themselves off yet. Uh, I do think you're going to see some players leave in the portal. Might not leave until after the spring game. Might leave this week. You just never know. They've got a few that I think will probably, you know, see the writing on the wall and say, okay, I'm four string, let's move on. But, um, yeah, I don't think it's been as big of a deal around here uh, as it is in some other places. Um, you know, spring camp's still going on, so maybe there's a, hey, I'm going to make a rally here in the back half of spring camp. But we'll see. I mean, it's, it's what is it, it's 745, so we don't know yet. Yeah. Uh, they might have three or four names this week. You never, I'm sure they may not know who those names are yet. Uh, and we will we'll just have to find out. It should be interesting, that's for sure. Yeah. So how much of like going shopping? Because if we had this discussion before spring camp, we were all like, well, I have Nebraska will probably go get that veteran quarterback. How much do you think it's changed because of the spring that Danny Kalen has had? Oh, good question. I think maybe a little bit, but simultaneously, you know, I think, if the right name is in that portal, uh, and that part, that that quarterback understands what he would be coming here to do, uh, which may not necessarily be to start, then you would consider that and give Kalen an opportunity to, or you know, give Harburg an opportunity. Mm -hmm. to and he can be your backup, and Harburg can go do things for the team that aren't related to waiting to play. And so, you know, I think that would be a win-win for everybody. I'm sure they would love to have a fourth quarterback who's willing to stay and be a mentor and, and sort of, you know, hang around the program and, you know, come in if they had, they had to have somebody go in and, and finish a drive, but they may not be able to get that done. And the, the challenge guys, is, is that they don't really, really, really know how good these guys are going to be. Until they play, you, yeah. you, you can you can project it. But the reality is, it, you got to go play the college football game. These guys haven't played any games yet; they don't have anything on tape, and so we're going to have to wait and see how good they are. And, and that's going to that might take some time. Sam, I want to go back to something you brought up about the, the retention of players who hadn't seen as much exit during the first go around of the transfer portal. And I don't know if this is exactly where you were going, but we've see, you mentioned still maybe having a plan for some of these players that otherwise you might see think about the transfer portal. How much of it do you think, maybe even one or two guys, that they've seen guys be cross-trained, they've seen guys move from one side of the football to the other, 
that could keep a player here. It, 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 again, as long as that communication is there and that plan is laid out, do you think that that is a factor? I think it, I, I think it, I think it certainly can be. Um, I think the happiness of playing with these coaches, like, like, like they like playing for them is a, is a factor. I think being at the University of Nebraska, where I think athletes are, are treated pretty darn well, would be a factor. All the money that you get could be a factor. And they're going to be really honest with players. Mm-hmm. I, I think there's probably been conversations where it's like, listen, if you want to start, if you want to be a three-year starter, mm-hmm. here's what you'll have to do at Nebraska. Here's what we project you at. Now, if you want to go be a three-year starter, maybe there's a place where you want to go do that. And you want to go get those reps. Now, if you want to be here and you want to be a part of a rotation or you want to be a special teams guy because this is the culture you want to be a part of, then here's what we have offered for you. I think it's pretty structured. Um, I, I'm not saying that it's like down to the last uh, note, but I think they've got a pretty good idea of being able to explain the student athletes. And NIL helps in this regard, mm-hmm. of being able to say, here's, here's what you can expect. Here's what we have to offer. And now you have to decide what it is you want to do. And there are going to be some guys that are like, yeah, I want to be a two or three year starter. If I got to go somewhere to do that, I'll do that. And then there's going to be guys that are more comfortable with, um, yeah, I'll, I'll battle. I'll be a special teamer. I'd love to be a starter by the back half of my junior year or, or the first half of my senior year. And I'm willing to stick it out and be a part of the, the, the culture that brings them back. Different choices for different players. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how comfortable do you think this staff is with the running back room and even with some guys that are not available, but just the overall development? How comfortable are they uh, with the running back room right now? I think they're not quite as comfortable as they were last year. And, I, and the reason I say that is because they've got, you know, they've got some injuries um, that they have to work through. I think they thought Dave Irvin was going to really – get going as the season went on, you know, and he flashed early, but, but there was some, there were some, uh, moments where it's like, okay, we can see where this thing is going. And then he got hurt and it didn't really go there. And so I think they were comfortable. For example, they were comfortable enough last spring to be able to say to AJ Allen, the conversation that I just sort of laid out. Yeah. And so AJ Allen left and, you know, he's a pretty talented guy. I'm not mm-hmm. saying he's the best running back of all time, but he, he, he was pretty talented, and they let him walk. Now, um, you know, their response in the offseason was to go get a guy because I think there's now uncertainty about, well, you know, Gabe Irving's coming back from a, from a hip injury, and Ramir Johnson's coming back from a shoulder. And Rule, Rule made that comment about, I had to show my staff the 2021 Michigan game, and I thought that was an interesting comment. I, I think they're a little less comfortable. I'm not saying they're going to go out and get a running back, um, but I, I think they, would, they wouldn't have been opposed to, you know, um, adding the number one running back in the transfer portal who, who ended up going to Ohio State. I don't think they would have been opposed to that. Um, they didn't do that, but they, I don't think they would have been opposed to it. He mentioned, Matt Rule did, uh, as far as the ideal you know, percentages of the work for the running backs. I, I think we, we we at least look at Dante Dowdell as, as the guy that would be your lead guy. I'm curious because there's Quentin Ives. A lot of good things have been said about him. There is, when healthy, a Gabe Irvin that is always intriguing with the experience. And, and Ramir Johnson, as you, you mentioned, he brings him up. Emmett Johnson, though, is is that the one that you think fits into that two role or fits into that, what do you say, 13, 12 to 13 carry uh, type game? Emmett Johnson? Yeah. Sure. I, I, I think he's, I think he's pretty good things last year. I, I'm sure they would love Dante Dowdell to, to really take it and, and run with it. I, mm-hmm. I don't know that that'll happen. But yeah, I, I think Emmett Johnson is somebody that they want to keep in the program and that they like. And, um, now, if Ramir John healthy, does does he take does he take some of those some of those snaps? Mm-hmm. That that'll be interesting to watch, and 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 I think that's going to be and we'll we'll talk to Barzell next week. That's going to be almost a rule conversation because once again, now, what game did Ramir Johnson get hurt in? The second or third game, I can't remember. Northern Illinois. Yep. Northern Illinois. 
he, he didn't play much mm-hmm. prior to that, yeah. at running back. So, like, in the first game, Dave Irvin, maybe he started, but Anthony Grant was out there a ton in the first game. And then it was Irvin. And, you know, and then in the second game, it was kind of the same thing. Grant didn't play as much as Fumble. And I, you know, he may not have played at all, but Irvin played a lot. He played a little bit. Uh, so then, you know, in the third game, I think Grant was back. And again, like, for whatever reason, Ramir Johnson comes off in 2021 here where I thought everybody thought he looked pretty good and barely run the ball. You know, he, they basically keep him on the bench for 11 games or whatever. 22 until he comes back and he helps to beat Iowa. And then the following year, it's, you know, well, yeah, he's, he's over here, but he's not going to play much. And now it sounds like Rule wants to reacquaint his current coaching staff with what Johnson can do. And and so this could be one of these conversations where, you know, Rule clues back in his coaching staff. Of like, you, you guys realize what this guy's done, right? He's done more than some of the guys that we have on the team. And we'll just have to see because they, they did not have, I mean, Ramir Johnson's entering his sixth season. He didn't have to come back. They didn't have to have him come back. I think he's there because they want him there. But if you want somebody there, then what are you going to do with him to, to, to show that you have value? I, these are all interesting questions that we haven't really gotten to because they've kept the running back group for last. Uh, I think they talked very for the last next, uh, next week and, you know, anytime something is sunshine and roses within any college football program, they don't really want to talk about it. And I think they're still trying to figure out what they're going to do with Vermeer, when Gabe Irvin's going to come back healthy. Is Dowdell going to be all the way there? All the questions that, you know, again, I think they've got some depth there, but I think they want more consistency. I agree. Sam, uh, we'll look forward to your observations today. Always appreciate your time, my friend. Thank you. It's uh, Sam McCullough. There it is. It is a frog strangler outside oh. here in Omaha. Yes, it is. Um, Probably got to run the ball. So the portal is open, and I'm watching. So Ohio State has a running back that was 650 plus yards last year. Uh, not really any notable names, unless you're like diehard college football and you follow that. Uh, Jeff Sims is still in the portal. Wow. Wow. What if Nebraska added Jeff Sims out of the portal? So Connor and I, I know an NIL deal. Connor and I, I don't want to say we were joking about it, but we had mentioned that this was about a month ago when we were just trying to, we both had realized that he had not landed anywhere yet. And so we had to go to the director to see if he was still listed as a student to see if, even if he came back in sort of a mentor role of a guy that is very well liked, a guy that if you ever had to, actually put him into play in a game, you're in a lot of trouble right now. But it's, I'm surprised. I, I am surprised. So he graduated in December. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if he went back home. Um, I haven't heard anything about him. Like no one has said, hey, I saw Jeff. Uh, he, you know, he may, there may be a, a team or two that realizes they need some depth in the quarterback room yeah. and they get a hold of him. But, He's still uh, out there. Yeah. But I, I think Danny Kalen's development, and I still think Nebraska, it'd be nice to add a warm body to that room. But Danny Kalen's development at least hasn't made you hit the panic button and go, we got to go get a guy. We we got to have a guy. We got to have a guy that's a backup. Well, your backup, and you maybe didn't think this in February, your backup might already be on the roster. Mm-hmm. That's not bad. That's not bad because then you don't have to teach somebody new. Right. But I... I whether they add players or not, and most of the guys that Rule gets out of the portal end up being starters, and he wants them for two years, not just one. Right. Um, I think I, I think you would be doing your a disservice if you did not at least examine the portal and kick the tires on some players where you think could either add depth or there might be an opening at a linebacker spot or somewhere where mm-hmm. they could get on the field and play. I, I think you're doing yourself a disservice if you just say, oh, that's not who we are. Yeah. It's too late in the game. You're always looking to upgrade your roster. Right. But how many spots are open where you go, man, we need a major upgrade? I think running back is one spot. I can't, I, I don't have faith in the knives uh, uh, because I haven't seen anything. Mm-hmm. A Ramir Johnson or a Gabe Irvin because they're injured. So now you're, especially in, Gabe Irvin. Now you're into a situation where you got to shift the Emmett Johnson and then you got a Dowdell who's still learning how to play running back. Yeah. I think I would dip my toe into the running back world of the portal, which 
can be pretty aggressive and can cost you a little bit of coin. Yeah. The, the, the quarterback part of that conversation with the portal, I, I think, is it, it, it would take such a unique find for someone who understands what their role ultimately would be. And that I, I don't know if that's available. But I would also think if it is available, it's probably, wouldn't you think it would be this go around of the transfer portal as opposed to the fall one, where mm-hmm. a lot of those guys are looking to you, find a landing I think a starting if you, spot? If, the, if, you, if you really need like a, a wow guy, the winter portal yes. for a quarterback yes. is better. This time, the quarterback around is possibly an FCS guy. It, right. I mean, look at South Dakota State. I mean, what if a FBS team needs a quarterback? Mark Gronowski mm-hmm. could leave. I mean, he just went through spring ball at South Dakota State, right. national championship quarterback. I don't know. It'll be it'll be interesting. It's just it's not it's not as sexy around here. Like we're not even like excited about the portal. We're like, yeah, Nebraska's got to have some attrition, and they yeah. will for some guys that probably have been here for a while, mm-hmm. but don't have much of a shot of playing. And you help them go play somewhere else. But like other places where you know people are like, oh man, we got a wish list. Well, good luck. My my experience with the Spring portal is there. There's not a lot of hopes there. It, it, right. Turn into reality and turn into championships unless they're Jordan Addison. And, and I'm hoping that that, for the most part, remains the the same going, uh, you know, going in years further with Matt Rule, because that means you feel solid with your core group. You feel solid with, for the most part, your depth. Now, hey, injuries creep up that maybe be season enders that you're not going to be ready for the fall. And that's where you have to address certain things. Depth is a, is a big part of it. But if you feel like you've got your core in place, you've got depth around that core, maybe there's a piece here and there that it's just not a time that we're waiting for spring to get over for that cycle to begin so we can see how the roster will improve from now till summer workouts or now till fall. That's a great thing for Nebraska to be in, and I hope that 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 continues. All right, addition and subtractions. We'll have subtractions. Will there be more additions than subtractions? Heck, yes, there will be. Probably, uh, I would say probably – Five to eight will be in the portal. You may not hear all of them publicly. That's kind of how it works. Uh, uh, BC's coming up at about 8.30. Uh, Andy Kendi will be by as uh, well. He'll be down in Lincoln. We'll just get all kinds of observations on what's going on in uh, Lincoln. Will he run with the other journalist, or is he in a different category? No, he's a vet, man. Okay, he's yeah. a smart guy. He lets He'll pick he, a spot. he lets the youngins knock each other down, yep. and then you just walk right in. Yep. That's Better in teams. They yeah. clear a path. Mm-hmm. All right. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley and Jimmy on 1620 The Zone. Hey, um... I got to tell you, so my fit has gotten a lot better with my good friends over at Lindley Clothing uh, from John and Marlene to uh, Jerry, um, because I have uh, I have, as they say, a uh, a body that is uh, not the easiest to uh, find a fit for. But they have found a fit for me at Lindley Clothing and well suited right next door. Their attention to detail, top notch professionalism. They got positive energy. You walk in the store and they look at you and they go, what can we help you with? And then they help you. Decide what is right for you. They give you the attention that you deserve, and they go the extra mile. You know, one of the big things is you're thinking, oh, man, a suit, that's got to be super expensive. Not really. So don't rent, own. Get yourself a suit from Lindley Clothing. You know it'll be top-notch. You know it'll be tailored perfectly. And right now, $199. They got some of the top brands. They got some of the best sportswear. Sportswear to to suits, to jeans in between. Top-notch. Even if you have a body fit that, uh, you know, um, uh, most things uh, you can't be purchased off the rack, they will find something for you. That's what they do at Lindley Clothing. And you can find them and well suited in the Linden Market, 132nd and West Dodge. More with Gary and Nick after this on 1620 The Zone. The best way to catch all the action is on 1620 The Zone. And no line for the bathroom. I love a beautiful lawn. I hate doing lawn care. That's why I use True Green. They're the official lawn care treatment provider of the PGA Tour. And we all know those are some nice greens. So just imagine what they could do for your lawn. All you have to do is water and mow. And to top it off, when you sign up for an annual plan by April 20th, get one application free. Visit TrueGreen.com for the best lawn at the best price, guaranteed. Restrictions apply. I'm Bridget Condon with NFL Network Now on the Westwood One Radio Network. Vikings wide receiver Justin Jefferson not in attendance at the team's first day of voluntary offseason workouts on Monday. 
When asked about Jefferson's absence, head coach Kevin O'Connell said his attendance for other parts of the offseason program, quote, remains to be seen. Another wide receiver not at his team's offseason workouts, Cowboys wideout C.D. Lamb. According to NFL Network insider Ian Rappaport, Lamb will not attend without a new contract extension. Lamb is set to make just under $18 million on his fifth-year option with the Cowboys. Rappaport also reporting Eagles wide receiver Devontae Smith agreeing to a three-year contract extension that will run through 2028 worth $75 million with $51 million guaranteed. And Colts defensive tackle DeForest Buckner getting an extension of his own, signing a two-year deal worth $46 million. This has been NFL Network Now on the Westwood One Radio Network. On the battlefield, there's a saying America's military men and women live by. Never leave a fallen warrior behind, ever. Off the battlefield, Wounded Warrior Project operates with the same goal. Wounded Warrior Project was created to help our men and women returning home with the scars of war, whether those scars are physical or mental. Wounded Warrior Project, we never leave a fallen warrior behind, ever. Learn more about what we do at woundedwarriorproject.org. While retinitis pigmentosa takes Mark's vision, his family gives him hope, whether at the family business or at home with his wife and sons. He knows he's not fighting alone. For 50 years, the Foundation Fighting Blindness has funded research into treatments and cures for blinding retinal diseases, providing hope to people with vision loss. And for Mark, winning the fight means being there for his family. The Foundation Fighting Blindness. Together, we're winning. Help us end blinding diseases at fightingblindness.org. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential. But finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. A lot can happen between falling in love with a house online and owning it. Between imagining living there breathing in your new home for the first time. Having an advocate who can help you navigate the complex world of financing, inspections, negotiating, analyzing the market, and talking through any anxieties that may pop up, that can make all the difference. That's what the expertise of a Realtor can do for you. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors and bound by a code of ethics, because that's who we are. Now, back up mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. All right, so you have weather permitting Nebraska and Creighton tonight down in Lincoln for the second time. Uh, and then KU is in town to take on the red-hot Omaha Mavericks over at Tal Anderson. Yeah, Nick Grimm said I should go. But I was like, hey, I've been under the weather, so I didn't know if I was going to go. But I go better today. I should go. PA guy tonight. Oh, gotta, well, that's gotta, a good damn. I got to continue to humor. It's basically what yeah, it turns it into is they play a baseball game around my stand-up act. Yep. I'm I had, here for it. I had somebody on Saturday, uh, a baseball alum, ask me, hey, do you know who's doing PA? And I said, I think it might be Gary. He said, yeah, he's pretty Either funny. Either Gary or Bob Shepard. said he's pretty funny. He didn't get into specifics. And then you told me uh, that you'd mentioned the what's up, brother? What's maybe up? maybe that's what he was referring to. <laughs> I don't up, know. Brother? How did, yeah. By the way, I'm curious. How did you fit that in? Uh, I think it was after a uh, strikeout. <laughs> so, so I was doing my own sound effects. Like, uh, yeah. I uh, can't remember who was in left field, uh, made a great catch. And so turned on the mic and went, da na 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 Who needs a soundboard? Hey, but this is what we do need. Uh, who does, you know, like ice cream sundaes are better in a mini helmet. Yeah. Oh, do you 100%. want a marketing? Just it would blow it away if Creighton, Nebraska, and Omaha all had mini helmets. Oh, they all, great. they all yeah. sell ice cream. Ice yeah. cream in but them? why can't why why have we never seen 
a Nebraska Creighton or Omaha mini helmet? That's a fantastic question that I don't have a good answer would, for because they, they should. They would, at all three places, they would sell out of them. They would mm-hmm. become a collector's yep. item. Yes, they would. Now, Who here's the question. Better in a helmet? If you introduce that now over at Haymarket Park, would it be the skinny end or the block end? Oh, you got to go skinny. Helmet. Yeah, I think so. We're in the Troy Dannon era. Mm. The block out, black back. Yeah, I like that. Black and, black and skinny is the way we're going. Who doesn't like black and skinny? It's like a, it's how I like my big men. Really? They get pushed around in the post. All right, we're going to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going <laughs> to... I'm going to do some Babe Winkleman over there on you. I'll just <laughs> reel you back in, save you, don't drown. Uh... <laughs> I, I don't even I don't have I don't have something for that I I got nothing. No, I'm just thinking about the great center matchups I grew up watching. Mm-hmm. You're, gonna, you're a big fan of Manute Bowl. Oh yeah, I, I saw him hey. with Florida Beach Dogs. <laughs> I saw him hit six three pointers for the. You guys see him in the game. NBA? I remember with the Racers uh, when he played for the Florida Beach Dogs. The manu- the manutralizer shot left quite the impression on you. I see. It did uh, mornings with Sharp and Handley on sixteen twenty the zone. Hey, tickets for less is the place to go to find for the great events. So you got baseball in town tonight. At Tal Anderson, you got it down at Haymarket Park. You've also got the Indigo Girls in town, all not related. Tickets for Less will take care of you. So you want to go to any of those events or anything that's coming up, they got the best selection of tickets for even the Storm Chasers who are on the road in Nashville, but they'll be back home next week for a huge series against Indianapolis that features Paul Skeen. So whether you're rooting for the hometown hero, you're cheering on the Royals down at the K, they're home this weekend. Tickets for Less has you covered across the board. And don't forget to save on your next order. Just use the promo code The Zone when you get to checkout. And always at checkout, they have no per ticket fees, none of that stuff. Upfront pricing, that's the way to go with Tickets for Less. So grab your tickets to the biggest sporting events, the biggest concerts, the biggest shows here in the area. And remember, when you go to ticketsforless.com, use my promo code, The Zone. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley returns in minutes on 1620 The Zone. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. 1620 The Zone. Traffic. From the Pyramid Roofing, time-saving traffic center. Rain is coming down hard in the metro right now. Expect longer delays than usual. Dodge eastbound slow between 180th and 144th. Dodge westbound slowing down between 108th and 120th. If you are traveling on I-80 eastbound right now, slow between I-680 and 72nd. And some slower traffic, I-80 westbound between 42nd and 60th. Give yourself some extra time this morning due to the weather. Stay safe and wear that seatbelt. I'm Peter Krenzer. This time-saving traffic was brought to you by Romeo's Mexican Food and Pizza. Enjoy Romeo's Grande Pizza and Taco Combo. One large two-topping pizza, four soft-shell tacos, chips, and peso dip for only $29.99. Only at Romeo's. Carry out only. Romeo's Mexican Food and Pizza. That's a typical restaurant. The world's largest sports book in Las Vegas is available right at your fingertips in Iowa. The Circa Sports Iowa app is sports betting the way it should be. Bet anywhere in Iowa and experience high betting limits, tight money line splits, and exceptional customer service. Download your new bookie today. Visit CircaSports.com and start betting like a pro from anywhere in Iowa. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7633. It's Champions Replacement Window Season, and we're celebrating with Buy Two Windows Get Two Free. If your windows are drafty, difficult to operate, or costing you money on your energy bill, it's time to replace them. Champion Windows is here to help. Champion builds our own windows right here in the USA. We make the process easy. We help you choose the best design options for your home. We then build your project in our very own factory. Our install team manages your project every step of the way, and it's all backed by our lifetime guarantee. Turn your house into your dream home with more livable space in a new Champion sunroom or enhance your curb appeal with new siding, now 30% off. Don't wait. This sale won't last long. Buy two windows, get two free, and 30% off sunrooms and siding. Call 877-GO-CHAMPION or visit championsavenow.com to schedule a free in-home estimate today. All discounts apply to our regular prices. Select style supply. Minimum purchase required. Cannot be combined with other advertised offers. See store or website for details. Welcome to this episode of RV Ready, brought to you by Leach Camper Sales in Council Bluffs. Mother Nature? We're getting things ready for everyone to have. And don't forget, the coffee's always on. 
The Zone Inbox is brought to you by Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. Email me, Connor Happer, with the Connor Happer Show at Connor, C-O-N-N-O-R, at 1620thezone.com. Send me your love, your hate, and maybe a few hot takes. The Zone Inbox, presented by Equitable Bank. I want to learn how to cook, but I keep ordering takeout. I plan to rearrange my closet, but I stopped after picking the clothes up off the floor. Accomplishing goals is hard, but when your goal is to learn a new language, Babbel makes it easy. In just 15 minutes a day, Babbel's award-winning language learning app will help you start speaking another language. Start having conversations in as little as three weeks. Comment tu t'appelles? Comment tu t'appelles? Vous êtes où? Vous êtes où? Babbel's bite-sized lessons make it easy to learn words and phrases you'll actually use. So when someone asks, How's your French going? You can say, Babbel est amusant et facilite grandement l'apprentissage d'une nouvelle langue. Et cela ne prend que 15 minutes par jour. When you want to really learn another language, it starts with Babbel. Babbel, language for life. Celebrating 10 million subscriptions sold. Now try Babbel for free at Babbel.com. Just go to Babbel.com and start learning a new language today. That's Babbel.com. B-A-B-B-E-L dot com. Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. EquitableOnline.com. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop tickets for less.com. K-O-Z-N Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. Now back to mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. A happy birthday, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Luel Cinder to some, uh, turns 77 today. Looks good at 77. Still drop his high hook. Or, guy. or I, think, yeah, I think his most uh, impressive accomplishment was a cameo on airplane. Yes. He's a pilot. Good go pilot. But he uh, gets out of the uniform as well and has the knee pads on. And, everything else. and I really had empathy when he talked about Dragon Lanier and Walt. You're right. You're right. The hell I don't. Also, I thought he played himself really well in uh, Showtime, the HBO series. I thought he was really, really good. I never Captain. finished Showtime, by the way. Well, it's finished, so yeah. you still have plenty of time, to, time catch to catch up. up. Yeah. yeah, I've been late to a lot of some really good ones. If you go by Showtime, the Celtics have won all the championships. And well, the Lakers have not. So I didn't even know this. Um, this happened mm, a few months ago, and now I'm trying to bring it back. As uh, my wife decided to make uh, an executive decision and. Uh, discontinue our HBO Max subscription. So yeah. she'll get it back in time for Hard Knocks. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's everybody she, loves. Hard she's Knocks. a big Hard Knocks fan, and you know the you know, Chicago Bears. I got uh, a big history guy. Um, so I just noticed HBO has a Oklahoma City bombing documentary. Yeah, Ooh. I was thirty years or I, almost thirty. Yeah. twenty nine. Was, was all into that. And, and you've be, you've been to the well Nebraska baseball. Yeah. Played ten days after the bombing. Oh, that's oh, right. Yeah. And so they and they took the whole team down to the site. It's, yeah. it's I mean, you're watching on TV, and so I'm every and I and I really like Oklahoma City. I do too. Uh, so I I've got everything that involved Timothy McVeigh and that bombing. I watched mm-hmm. like every time you drive by on 35 north of Oklahoma City where he was pulled over. I'd be like, I know that exact same spot. Yep. Uh, so yeah, they've got a. a uh, it's on the nineteenth. They have a uh, documentary oh, wow. that the trailer. I just watched yeah. the trailer during the break, and I'm like, whoa, hello. Um, I don't know if there'll be any new stuff, but yeah, it's it, hard to believe it's now been almost thirty years. Yeah. Anybody who's been to the museum, and we've said oh. this on the show before, the very beginning, man, they get you. You're sitting down in a room. Yeah. Yep. You hear everything yep. as it is, and once it happens, it's like we got your attention. And, and even yeah. if you don't go through, it's it, well because, I'm with you, Jimmy, on that because the first time we ever went. We brought uh, the Miller North baseball team in a tournament there. And this was just more of the parents and the coaches. We went the first night. So the, the tour itself was closed, but the, the, the luminaries lit up. Yep. It's, it's all the a, chairs. Yeah. The tiny chairs are the ones that it's, get me. It's a, yeah. And that's uh, absolutely, but it's, it's quite the sight. It's, it's, um, I'm with you too when it comes to those moments, um, whether it's history or, or historical tragedies. I just, I get hooked into those documentaries of how it happened and the backstory of everything involved. And that would be one. That would be yeah. one worth just saying, yep, we're getting HBO Max. Boom. Back. There you go. That's yeah. what Thanks. you say to your wife when you go home today. Because I don't know. Hard Knocks might be a tough sell, but this one, yeah. You're going to have to explain mm. it because she'll be like, oh, why are we getting this? Is it something funny? Is it? Well, well stay with me here. Yeah. Just, yeah. just trust me. 
So we have Nebraska Creighton baseball weather permitting uh, tonight here on the uh, zone, also on Nebraska public media. Um, what a difference from the last time these two teams played when Nebraska had their 10 game winning streak snap, mm -hmm. fell behind five, nothing lost five, three, uh, big moment at the time for Creighton to win that game. Both teams have been kind of meh since then. Yeah. Uh, cause I remember, you know, Ed got really fired up. I mean, that was a big victory for yeah. Ed. I mean, middle of the field, he was fired up. He's doing his post game press conference. Yeah. John Bishop walks by, yeah. he stops, and and I hear Bishop go, "We got him, we got him." Yeah, and then he he stopped. He actually stopped his interaction with the media, yeah. went back over to John, and yeah, they we did it. Exchange pleasantries. They fist oh yeah, yeah. And then they chest bumped. Ed um, Ed does not. He doesn't he's hide. Recreating the he, oh, no, he does. Line. He he makes it public hey, how big this full, game is. Full credit. Uh, it's not only a big game to Creighton, and it does mean something to Nebraska. It does. Creighton just shows it a little bit more. But Creighton has owned Nebraska in baseball. They won nine of eleven. Mm -hmm. There's no looking past that. You can say, well, Nebraska's been in the NCAA tournament more recently. And yes, they have. But when these two teams meet and it's a quirky midweek, so what would happen if ever we got a situation where the ones went against the ones? Yeah. Who would win there? Right. But you have to play it in the midweek and it still matters. I mean, wins matter. That's what I've been taught. Yeah. Um, but Nebraska needs this win tonight. They need to win this game at home against Creighton. The way they're playing. They've lost five of the last eight. The bullpen has been a mess mm -hmm. during this stretch. They can't afford to start an eight-game homestand where I think hosting a home regional has started to drift away. Yeah. They're still in the NCAA tournament, but are they a two or a three in this eight-game homestand? To me, will show you where they're going, but they got to win tonight. This is, a, this is about as close to a must-win game in my book for Nebraska baseball than there's been in a while. I agree, and I think, a lot of it has to do with we can we can talk about the resume part of this all you want and it's something about freaking Rutgers every time Nebraska looks like they might be in a position to at least put themselves in a position to host that they, they've got to play Rutgers and then all of a sudden Rutgers ruins the party. By the way, Nick, I did see the rack at Rutgers the outdoor the outside of it. Oh, you weren't kidding. Both yeah, of you weren't kidding. Oh, it's, oh. it's 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 depressing. And like the big sign the right there on the side, the Jersey Mikes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It see, I, looks okay. And I haven't seen it since they actually named it Jersey Mike's. That guy gives, away a, guy gives away a lot of money. Every time I uh, see a commercial, it's yeah. like, today is Jersey Mike's giving day. How much do you think Danny DeVito makes? A lot of sandwiches. Uh, those are funny. Yeah, they're, they're good. They got a good, they got a good uh, little rapport there. But for, for Nebraska, this is, you, you brought up the bullpen. And when you're throwing just below a seven clip during the stretch, we go to the walk to strikeout ratio. It's not good. For Nebraska, I was more disappointed on Sunday with the early missed opportunities that they had. I mean, despite some of the struggles that you're dealing with, and, and again, mid-season, you do tend to get this with other college baseball teams where maybe the bullpen is is getting a little bit unreliable. So you got to you got to reorganize a couple of things how you do that. But that's where you're hoping your offense will carry you through, and you're getting those opportunities that you're going to be able to have those quality of bats when you have guys on on base you're actually cashing in on that early especially on a Sunday where you can set the tone and try to put a team away that was a disappointing thing so we we know that this a, this offense is more than capable they've shown that they showed that on Saturday but it's having that consistency and then couple that with the bullpen where it's at right now you can talk about this being a must win from a RPI standpoint and from having that that opportunity and yeah that's true but i think from the psyche of this team of how they approach the second half, how that second half looks for Nebraska, knowing that you have a highly emotional game with Creighton. And I'm with you when people, I know there's a lot of people that say, it seems like this matters more to Creighton. I've, I've been around the coaches and the players during this game. They just don't make it as public. It does mean a lot to them. Yeah. That if you're able to channel into that tonight, and you get back to form because up until this week and a half of baseball, so many things on the mound have improved. And I think we expected that yeah. under Rob Childress. You need to get back to that. I think more than anything, whatever arm they're throwing out there, because these are guys are going to use in the bullpen in the weekend as well, that needs to look solid. I'm always, uh, I'm always intrigued by the social media back and forth. Like, yeah, I mean, uh, Creighton uh, has owned Nebraska in yep. a few sports, and so they let it be known for mm -hmm. days and days. And you got to sit on that. So I asked Nebraska? the person that's in charge of social media at Nebraska. I said, you got anything in the holster there for uh, <laughs> for this game? And they're like, nope. Nope. Yeah. We don't. We just, they're, we acknowledge them, but other She's than that, just engaged. keep it moving. Yeah. 
Uh, you got a little, uh, you know, I mean, there's a little tension convention there in the press box between Nebraska and Creighton Media. After today's media Should theatrics. be announcers. Should be like, do they give uh, Bishop the cold shoulder down there? <laughs> They're like, hey, you used to be one of us. Um, <laughs> You used to be in this booth. Yeah, now you're, now in you're in that, that booth. booth. Which is going to be weird for me tonight, too. I'm going to be in oh, that. that's true. I'm going to be in that so other you booth. Get, you should get the cold shoulder. I probably will. Do you wear black just to be like down the middle? I can't hurt anyone's feelings here. And I I'll, know everybody. I'll, I'll, I'll wear, I'll wear, I got a Creighton. I'll, I do have a black Creighton quarter zip that I'll wear tonight on, on wear the broadcast. But uh, that's just Hanley. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> just wear, wear my Connor Bedard get, jersey tonight. <laughs> like, hey, I'm neutral, baby. I think the social media part of it is salty. I think there's. Uh, you only take so you, you only take so much shrapnel on this though. If you're if you're Nebraska when it comes to baseball, you know, and that's the thing when you get that that win that that rare win here in the last couple of years, do you pounce on it or do you handle it that like a gentleman? It's like, hey, let's get let's get our our own streak going before we really start digging in because I can respect that. Beat Creighton, but man, wait till you see what we're going to do when we beat North Dakota State. <laughs> <laughs> Summit League, you think you own us? No, not uh, anymore. I hope the weather uh, clears. Uh, this is the second of uh, three um, in the second game this year. Again, Creighton won the uh, first one. Creighton's won nine of 11. Mm -hmm. They played well. They've, they've won one run games. They have made less mistakes. But the problem with this game tonight is, on repeat, is it's a parade of pitchers. Yep. It's midweek baseball. Weird stuff happen. You don't have your normal starters. You don't want to burn the bullpen, so you have these weird pitching combinations that can lend to weird games, and then we make this big sweeping generalization about oh, I mean, it's it, what yeah. if what if the ones were going against the ones? Yeah, and to me that, uh, that that's why I always wish this thing could be a three game weekend series where you could play the first one either in Omaha Lincoln, then you rotate, and then you you know the third one you come back Which, to wherever. Unfortunately, with both of these skippers, that will never no. ever happen. No. Um, I wonder because we've heard nothing, and 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 both both it benefits both Creighton and Nebraska in baseball to play and each get a home game at least. I wonder what happens with the Big Ten baseball schedule if they add another weekend, and if that affects some midweek games. I hope that this is not impacted at all. I hope question. that we will always have three games between Nebraska and Creighton. But you never know with the Big Ten schedule. Well, are they going to add? Yeah, because you get three, the, six more conference games. And if you think about your travel dates, if you're going out to Eugene or you're going out to Seattle, and you got to leave earlier than what you normally yeah. would, uh, that's that's a big factor. And you can play the Tuesday game, but what happens if you're trying to play a Tuesday Wednesday game, uh, not with each other, but you have another, say, North Dakota State or another uh, team that's going to be scheduled on Wednesday? You're probably going to have to kick that one because you're going to need at least one day off before you get on an airplane and head down. Uh, down head west. So, yeah, those are those are all factors. I, I I do think it means enough to both of these schools that they will try to preserve that as much as you can. Wouldn't shock me though, and I hope it doesn't. Wouldn't shock me if it goes just two. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think minimum would be two. Mm -hmm. It'll never just Every, be a one game. Team thing. gets a, a home game. Yeah, and unless I, COVID comes back and then you can't play. Oh gosh, that would suck because that means we'd have to do the whole thing about everybody gets an extra year and then I'd be confused. <laughs> I know we're fi we finally have seen the light at the end of the tunnel uh, on this we're, thing too. We're, we're coming on to the last oh, year. Oh man! Then you can get. He's your really a junior. All right, Brian Christofferson's going to join us uh, next on Mornings with Sharp and Hanley and Jimmy on sixteen twenty, the Zone. All right, so we do have in-state baseball tonight, and all three teams are playing, and all three you can watch in your favorite ballpark. You know what? And then you go, eh, not so much. Foul ball comes your way. Instead of going for the ball like you usually did because you got excited as a 50-year-old man to get a foul ball, you just let it go off the noggin, and you're like, yeah, it happens. What? What are we talking about here? Well, let's talk about life, man. You know when you're down in the dumps and things aren't going well, and you're wondering, hmm, I don't have the same energy or drive to keep up with my kids after work. Five, ten years ago, man, I was present for my family. I was right there. I was there. Bam. I was a good father, husband, friend, as I was always. And then something happened. You know what? Low T could be an issue with you. Age doesn't matter. Any guy, low T can impact you. It can sideline you. It can be like giving up a crooked number when you've been pitching a shutout. So to get back to being dazzling on the mound, it's time to gee, see if you've got low T. And that's where mentality comes into play. They're board certified physicians. They'll work with most insurance companies to see if you got symptoms of low T and then get you on the right path. For more information, go to the website, lowtusa.com. Their testosterone therapy It's going to help men, you, 
regain normal function, restore your ability to perform normally at all levels. Don't give up a dong. Give up a bagel. Mentality can help you. LowTUSA.com. Gary Sharp, Nick Hanley, and Jimmy Chavez. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley. Weekdays 6 to 10. On 1620 The Zone. 1620thezone.com Previously on Unsportsmanlike Conduct I cannot believe you didn't want to watch Hook What a classic I've never movie. seen Hook either Yeah, but uh, Nick, you're five Sean was alive in the mid-90s I didn't see every single movie You didn't see out. anything You're what a big dumb idiot about? I'm working at the gas station again Watching the 94 Orange Bowl Watch some damn movies, Sean I've seen And plenty. listen to Nirvana Hell yeah. On Sportsmanlike Conduct with John Bishop and Josh Peterson. Weekdays 2 to 6 on 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV Newswatch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Strong to severe storms possible Tuesday morning, mainly before 10 a.m. in the metro. We'll see some clearing through the middle of the day with windy conditions persisting, then more scattered showers and storms possible in the afternoon into the evening. Highs in the mid-70s. I'm meteorologist Sean Everson from KETV News Watch 7. 1620, the zone traffic. From the Pyramid Roofing Time Saving Traffic Center. Accident reported JFK southbound at Q Street. This has the right lane blocked and traffic backed up to F Street. Rain making traffic slower than usual today. Dodge eastbound slow between 180th and 150th. If you are traveling I 80 eastbound direction, slow between I 680 and 42nd. If you are traveling I 80 westbound direction, it's not moving very quick between 42nd and 60th right now. And pretty slow JFK northbound between Childs and Q. Please stay safe, wear that seatbelt. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. I'm Peter Krenzer. This time-saving traffic was brought to you by the Nebraska Lottery. They're out there. Eight beautiful new red 2024 trucks in trucks and bucks from the Nebraska Lottery. And you could win one. Just visit any Nebraska Lottery retailer and pick up some tickets today. Top prize odds, one in 336,000. I've never seen this. John Deneen from Saul's Jury and Loan. I've never seen the price of gold as high as it is right now, which means you could be sitting on a gold mine yourself. Bring us in your broken gold chains, gold rings, and diamond jewelry. You'll never get a better price for those items. Saul's knows jewelry, and we've been around, and we've never seen gold this high. Sell your gold with confidence at Saul's Jewelry and Loan at any of our six convenient locations. Find it all at Saul's, Saul's Jewelry and Loan. You'll find it all at Saul's, Saul's Jewelry and Loan. Not to brag, but Progressive's Name Your Price tool is mankind's greatest tool ever. Even better than the wheel. Sure, without the wheel, we wouldn't have modern transportation or funny videos of dogs riding skateboards. But without the Name Your Price tool, we wouldn't have easy access to auto insurance options based on our budget. And, well, cars do need wheels. They also need insurance. And insurance never goes flat. Learn more about the greatest tool ever. The Name Your Price tool at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Not available in all states. Timber Creek Pizza Pub and Grill serves pizza with an unforgettable pizza sauce and unique combinations of bold flavors. Try customer favorites like the Crab Ragoon Pizza, Mountain Man, or the Upset Grizzly Bear. There are daily specials and menu items like tacos, salads, wings, and burgers. Stop in and check out Timber Creek's family-friendly dining environment while enjoying a popular adult beverage. Timber Creek Pizza Pub and Grill at 178th and Harrison and at Timber Creek Pizza Omaha. Com. Are Nebraska craft beers and ciders important to you? Whether you just love Nebraska brewed beers and ciders or you're a full-fledged craft brewery, there are benefits to membership for anyone with the Nebraska Craft Brewers Guild. Their sole mission is to foster and help grow the Nebraska-centric brewing community. Become a member today at Nebraska.beer and help advance the craft beer and cider industry in the state of Nebraska. Find out more about the Nebraska Craft Brewers Guild at Nebraska.beer. Spring has arrived, and Lenaha has everything you need to revitalize your landscape. The best shrubs, perennials, and freshly dug trees, all grown right here in Nebraska. Lenaha Nurseries, your homegrown headquarters since 1974. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. 
Ramps corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramps software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now, get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Currents issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. And we're back. Mornings with Sharp and Ham. Here's Gary, Nick, and Jimmy on 1620 The Zone. With the rain, I just thought about this. So there is the last open portion of uh, spring practice for the media before the uh, spring game next Saturday because they will be indoors. Ooh, media will get a good look. They can't run and hide. Yeah. Uh, Brian Christopherson from Husker 24-7 will uh, be present here in about uh, 30 minutes. Uh, good morning. How are you? I'm good. It's not raining at the stadium at this very oh. moment, so maybe maybe they'll be able to God. hop out there. Is it out of there? It's it, There's there's no nothing more coming, right? So you're good? I don't know. It's a nice, it's a nice little kind of uh, – the sun is a little clouded, but it's, okay. uh, it's very peaceful over Memorial Stadium. It's one of those where someone would take oh. a picture with their phone and act like they're the first one who's ever taken that sort of shot of Memorial <laughs> State. Hold on. Let me bring up your Twitter account. <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> Uh, man, that, uh, that Devaney, when it's time to play football, man, that weather gets out of there. <laughs> hey, quick question here. Um, you're, uh, I think you're extremely talented, uh, athletically in a different life. You were, you know, great. If you were, the, yeah, okay. if you were the number one overall pick and you know, you have your family, you got your former coach, you got former teammates, like in the ranking of who you would hug to celebrate, where does Jake from state farm rank? <laughs> great question i okay this is awesome that you asked that because i i saw he kept getting i'm i'm getting a, a little older where i'm not always like in tune with exactly what people are talking about but i know they're talking about a subject like i know it's out there but i don't even go like why is this and i saw so i saw the jake and state farm stuff like popping up here and there last night so now thank you for that question because it makes sense so um, no, he would be like eighth to tenth, eighth to tenth. Well, 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 okay. let me ask you guys. So, so he was second. So yeah. Caitlin Clark hugged her family, and then she went and hugged Jake from State Farm, who shows up at every single sporting event. He does. Now. Yeah. Let, let me ask you guys this because he's he's kind of like Drake. If you were doing an endorsement with State Farm and you were racking a lot of money, wouldn't you hug him? Wouldn't you be high on the priority list right there? I think I could. Uh, I could, could be. I could prioritize him if I was getting a nice little check from State Farm. Yeah, I could too, Nick, and me, and perhaps uh, he's just got a great personality and yeah. a good golf, good golf partner, and yeah. you've, you've kind of over the course of like you know eight months just kind of hit it off, where it's like this this guy will take that extra forty five seconds to look for your golf ball when you hit right, you know, <laughs> and if he's that kind of guy, you you hug him quicker. Yeah, Brian, I I owed you a lot of hugs when we played golf. I know. Yeah, uh, we I I did not represent myself well. We'll have to play again. I, I've never, I've played with both of you, and I've never played as well as I can. And so I, I need to uh, I need to write that wrong. That, that's what I say. Yeah, I can play a lot uh, better. Trust me, uh, guys. I say that every time I'm out. Hit it. But but to finish the thing on Jake here. So I'm a State Farm customer, but them changing from the guy from the original Jake from State Farm commercial to a professional actor. And then remaking the commercial with him to be the face of the company is like the biggest gaslighting in modern history. <laughs> I mean, I, I just give the guy kudos. He 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 made it. You know, like with think about like when you're growing up, you don't you don't set that item as like your your wish list. Like this is what I'm going to be when your folks ask you, and and there it is. He, he somehow is making a lot of money off of it, and. Uh, same guy who drives her around with the emu, you know, uh, is making <laughs> oh. probably decent cash. Yeah, and you know, no, he didn't ever say to his his mom like, I'm, "I think I'd like to be a detective with an emu and just a thirty second shot and and make more than you should." But he is. <laughs> the, he, wow, I did, okay. The, the Jake's from State Farm thing is relevant today, but now we went with the emu guy, the the dude with the. The aviators and the and the stash and his yeah, guy's partner yep, is yep. uh, Lemu and Doug. Doug, that's his name, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. 
yeah, that's 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 where we are right now. Um, I know Bruncey's going to be there for for baseball tonight, but you're, you're a big baseball fan. This this game tonight between Creighton and Nebraska, as far as where you are looking at the, this on the spectrum, is we, we've been kind of going back and forth on this bigger game for Creighton or Nebraska, in your opinion. Um, I don't know Creighton's situation as well as Nebraska's. I think it's a, as far as midweek games go, you never want to overdo it, but they need mm-hmm. to get back on the winning track and um, just build a little momentum through it. And I felt like last year, um, those games, I, I understand the setup, and I think most people do, that you're throwing younger arms or guys who are trying to develop and you're, you're wanting them to get better through those games. But I, I felt like last season, which is old news to them over there, but it, it every time they did have a little something going, it was those midweek games, which would uh, be the stop sign immediately. You know, like mm-hmm. sort of a, even though you, you know you didn't throw your best guys, you still lost. It kind of hurts, you know, you, especially if it's an in-state game where, uh, you know, there's a little bit of that extra juice to it and how people talk about it. So I, I think it's a big deal that they, they go get one and, uh, you know, get back on the right track after what was probably a frustrating weekend. But I should probably just stop it there. I, I don't know near as much as Brunt on this subject. I just listen to him and nod my head. <laughs> um, but I, 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 I know he thinks they've got the goods to be uh, a team that's, you know, has a shot in the postseason. But uh, this is a this is one of those moments where you got a little adversity and you got to yeah. you got to respond right now. Raleigh Worcester, the uh, latest addition to Nebraska's uh, basketball roster, the uh, uh, fifth year from Utah, who played a lot of games for Craig Smith. Uh, more important addition from the ball handling ability or his defensive ability? That's a good question. I think maybe the ball handling. I just like, you know, that you look at his numbers through his time with Craig and he, uh, you know, averaged more than five assists each of the last two years. I know the previous season got cut short with the injury in January. Uh, but if you look at his full season right before that, um, his assist to turnover ratio was, I think, 2.6 to one. And it was like second in the conference, um, you know, and uh, 30th nationally. So um, I think that part, when you think about last year, I I liked a lot about uh, Jamarcus Lawrence and the way he uh, fought to get better and he would have those games, you know, like at Indiana where he busted out, but, uh, it was always sort of, uh, you know, lessons being learned along the way as was sort of expected at that point guard spot in this example. And, you know, we'll see what happens with, you know, Aaron Euless, he's, you know, still over there as far as I know. Um, those are, those are two, uh, veteran hands, you know, and let you, you let those guys sort of sort it out and, and you, and you see, uh, gives you the best option you have some depth there um so i thought it was a really nice pickup i started to hear his name a little bit last week and then knew he was visiting nebraska and the more i looked into him i was like yeah he he fits exactly a space you would want to occupy and he's started 101 games so there's that too and just his overall build too a little thicker six foot four over 200 pounds and i'm with you his ability to distribute i know you're going to look at what he can do defensively, but you you bring up the point guard situation with Aaron Euless factored in there as well. Is this the first time that we can look at Nebraska where you have options at the true point guard spot and and for a Fred Hoiberg team where he doesn't feel like maybe that's always the most necessary thing to have, how that might look offensively more than anything with having a true point guard or true point guards having that that option there what that can do to the rest of your guards this is uh, this just feels very different right now yeah it feels like they could be a little bit better established there than they have been in the past we'll have to see that prove out but you've got somebody um in Worcester who had well you know I was looking through some of his best games and I like that too he had some real highlight uh statistical performances against top competition like he was one of those guys who like against Arizona you know, a year ago, um, almost had a triple double. Mm-hmm. He, he had like 13, 11 and, and nine assists, I think. Um, you know, so I, whenever I see a guy like that, who has flashed, you know, that against the best teams, he can go out and put a game together like that, where it's not just one category, but he's checking all these different boxes that always kind of 
gets me a little bit more excited about that player. Um, you know, like like Bryce Williams last year is a great example. He had that injury um, where they didn't know if he was going to play against Purdue, and he almost gets a triple double. You know, mm-hmm. stuff like that always jumps out to me when guys are capable of doing that and helping their team in so many ways. So I think he does fill a lot of things for them. You know, obviously they got to keep adding, um, but you know they, they've been pretty good at this the last two cycles, and so. You, you, you do give a little bit of leeway. I do in thinking they, they kind of know what fits them better than, um, you know, pencil neck me, um, you know, so wow. I, I, <laughs> you know, like wow. pencil, neck, pencil neck scribe, you know, it's like a term. You guys uh, anyway. better never call me negative again. <laughs> I was, it was, I was talking on myself, you know, skinny, skinny little twerp making his commentary on the other side. I get it. You know, that we get some of that. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't believe in sort of the last couple of years, what they've, um, sort of done and w- with guys where when they initially got them, people didn't just jump up and down and wasn't a huge deal. Like with rink mass last year, or Bryce Williams, but they knew they fit within their system. And so we'll see if they can kind of do that again with guys who, Maybe not everyone's going to act like they got it all solved right away, but when you put them all together, uh, it looks like a pretty good picture. Hey, let's shift to football because uh, when practice begins, you don't get to see get into the heart of practice where they have the three teams and they're going and it's reps. And the one thing that is always said about Matt Rule and his two years of practice, whether it be in the spring or the fall, is there's no downtime. Guys don't stand around. Guys, their feet are always moving. They're always learning. And I think in this situation, when you're still in an infancy of a program, more reps, the better. And I love what they've done this spring to give guys that, whether they're the first team or the fourth team guy, they're getting about the same amount of reps. When we flip to fall, when you do that in spring, what do you think is the benefit when you get to the fall and you're not in 15 practices to get ready for a final scrimmage, you're in 20 plus practices to get ready for the start of the season? Ideally with, uh, a decent number of guys that all those reps translated toward uh, when you have those, especially those crisis moments, which we saw rise um, at multiple positions last year with the running back. You remember the press conference where there's like you know, a couple of running backs out. There's one where there's few alignment out. Okay. You're, you're going back to the spring and you're saying this guy got as much time. Um, you know, let's take like, um, a Sam Sledge or somebody mm-hmm. like that, and I'm just using a name, but um, someone who maybe is eighth or ninth right now, I don't know, but um, he he got as much time as the guy who's second or third amongst all the O-linemen, and he's built up some confidence in some of the questions he had about himself and how this works and that works, and now um, they're further along that you, you plug them in, and, and hopefully it takes off a little quicker than it would otherwise, so um, you know, that was always a big advantage back in the day been talked about a lot, but it, it's true. It's, you know, it, and it also keeps guys engaged. Like, I, I think that's a big part of it. Just the mental aspect, like say you're an early enrollee, um, who was a talented player who got, you know, everything he sort of wanted and was always being talked about at the previous level. Sometimes it's very hard that first year when you get in. And you feel like you're just standing off to the side. I remember there was a spring or a camp here where in the frost there. It wasn't necessarily the coaching staff's fault, but there's a lot of injuries. And all these guys who had just got here were sort of off to the side one day. I was looking at them, and there's like eight to ten of them against the wall. And I'm thinking to myself, this cannot be good for their psyche. You know, like, you know, you're just not out there. You don't, it feels so distant when you're not like getting those reps. Like, when is this ever going to happen for me? And it may not be as far as it seems at the time, but it's hard when you've always been the dude. So I think that's as big as anything is that mental component. You just keep guys so locked in and like, yeah, keep going, keep going. And we've, they've got that four game red shirt, you know, clause to work with, which I think is beneficial too, to helping keep those guys going. And kind of along the same lines, when you, you think about guys that are always going to be prepared uh, when they come in, I know this was brought up to Matt Rule's media availability last week. He was asked the question about, I think they brought up the example of John Bullock. And for a guy that was a walk-on, then elevated to a scholarship and a major impact on that defense, it was hard for him to pinpoint maybe the next one. But if if you're looking for that ideal jump, and it could be on either side of the ball, where we saw some stuff, some positive stuff, 
but it seems like maybe the table is set now for one of those players to step up. Does any anybody or buddies come to mind to you, Brian? Um, I think w- one or two of those DBs are going. I don't know who to answer though. Like mm. there, there's like a collection of like five or six defensive backs. And obviously, Bly Hill's new here, so he he wasn't part of that yeah. last year. But he's getting a lot of reps now. Um, but you know, you've got your like your Ethan Nations and your Dwight Boodles and and some of those guys. And I'm not saying it's going to happen right away, but I do think there could be a point where um, we see a couple of those DBs who are kind of right now. We don't know how to separate them. The yeah. coaching staff might have a better idea, but it, it's going to matter toward the question you're talking about there's other people maybe a little more established who aren't a great like specific apples to apples comparison with john bullock but like mckay bayer played yeah. a decent amount last year but now there's that like okay what's that next thing look like mm-hmm. what how where can he take that now I, I, this is not, also not a great example of the question but it got me thinking about him as i said bayer is um jevin right i don't yep. think it gets talked the first about name i thought of as, like yeah, I mean, Javin Wright is that guy who, when I think of like playmakers or guys who can really take a defense potentially from being good to great, I think of guys at least with his traits and his skill set. And I, I think I've said it before. I believe he was the one who almost got Shadir Sanders on that one pass rush. He was like four inches from it and ends up being a 40 yard completion in the third quarter. Those kind of guys, like if they get the, you know, they talk about, getting the extra three to four points it's you know it's getting the inches as the as al pacino would say in the old speech and uh some of those players who were maybe close to that last year like a javen right this is where uh where you see that that difference in, in this next season hey we'll get chatter on this because uh I, I think this will be a day to to check out the linebackers like a thompson or why do you think that vincent shavers is going to play in the fall because um shavers um, when, whatever happened with Miami, um, you know, if, if it kind of fell off from Miami's end, I think maybe it did whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, I think him and his father in talking to him at that point, I remember when they took this visit here and they were immediately able to reset. And I think both of them agreed with each other. This is the best thing that ever happened to you. You're going to make this the best thing that ever happened to you. There was like this determination even back in December when you did the interview with those guys. I, I talked to them both at the same time and I was really taken by it. And, you know, we do a lot of recruit interviews, but I just thought, man, there's a, he's a, they got a little edge to them. Like <clears throat> they feel like this was a blessing in disguise. And sometimes when you get a guy with that mindset, he's just like, let's go rock it. You know, like, I feel like I caught a break actually that I wasn't expecting that I fit here. Um, and then he got here and he immediately dove into like what they were talking about with strength and conditioning and, um, the nutrition program. And he gained like 15 good pounds, 10 to 15. And he, he was just a really good player at that level of amongst the, you know, most talented guys some of the most talented recruits in the country is at least as speed goes. So he doesn't lack speed at all. He's kind of put on the bulk and he's got a good mindset and he just, he's, he loves football like inside and out. I know that from talking to him. So I'm actually not that surprised maybe that he's at this far, but I, I thought he would make a little noise. He's probably making more than I even suspected though. Yeah, uh, He'll be one to uh, watch, uh, especially uh, next week in the spring game. BC, uh, thanks for your time. Enjoy uh, practice today. We'll look forward to your uh, observations as always. All right. Thanks for having me, guys. That's uh, Brian Christopherson. I think it's a huge thing that's happened here during spring. So Vincent Shaver is going to play. The White Boodle was in line to play last year before he got injured. Now, wasn't going to be a starter, but was going to get on the field. So you have Barney. It is a huge spring that Nebraska has Florida guys because throw in Larry Tarver and throw in Willis McGahee, guys that come from Florida that are getting a lot of reps in spring. Mm-hmm. And so they see a path to them playing instead of, ah, oh, man, I didn't get very many reps in spring. Yeah. Might be easy to pull the ripcord because I can tell you, after covering high school football in Miami, when guys go away, there's always people in their ear nonstop, nonstop the right people are in their ear telling them this is a great opportunity for you. But everybody is like, ah, you know what? Come back. No one can see you. You're a long way away from home. You're going to get homesick. But the fact that Florida guys, in particular Miami guys, 
have come to Nebraska in the spring and they're on the field mm-hmm. and they're getting some love and they look like they fit, which it's a whole different world down there. When you're playing at Taz Powell on a Friday night with the Miami skyline in the background, it's it's real deal high school football. Those guys here, that's a big deal. I think I think that needs to be talked about more, how the Florida guys have fit in and they are on the field and balling out in the spring. Because well, they, they'll stick around for the they'll stick around for the fall, um, and most of them are contributors or have a potential in the next few years to be contributors. I, I, that's why I really like that question about the benefit of what you get from reps, especially when there are people. You get to these practices, and you you can just tell when it's it's a well functioning machine because everybody is doing something. I, I don't care what sports you're in, and I don't care how big your roster is. Obviously, football that's a lot of people to make sure that everybody is active. Because I would agree with Brian. There's always going to be that that feeling of okay, next man up. You've you've gone through those reps. I mean that that's the obvious benefit of that. But you bring up a great point about freshmen when you get them entrenched, especially when they're early enrollees and they're going through spring. Yet they're kind of sitting on the side a little bit. Maybe they're somewhat active, but not as much active as opposed to getting them entrenched into whether it's the offensive side of the football, the defensive side of the football. That they immediately before they even really get into the thick of it in the fall that they feel they're going into the season with a pretty good understanding of what they're trying to do and where they fit in. That That's something I would totally agree probably doesn't get discussed enough when you do have a system, especially kids that come from different areas, whether we're talking Miami or different areas, California, coming in and immediately going to work and getting the amount of reps that they feel, damn, okay, I'm part of this right now, and I know I feel confident in what I know with this system or that. All right, Andy Kendi a little bit later. Uh, he'll actually get to watch practice. I think that's. I think he's down in Lincoln with a uh, with a uh, the host of uh, KTV people. So he'll come up at about uh, nine uh, forty five. We'll run through some emails. Uh, we'll talk more about Jake from State Farm, who is paying Caitlin, Caitlin Clark's salary. Get a nice red suit up. Do they, I mean, when he makes those appearances, does it have to be the red white suit? Maybe maybe he wears the home whites every now and then. I don't know. Where does the guy not appear? He's everywhere. I'd like that it's like life. Drake. Or Connor McCaffrey, I'd be a little nervous. But do you think he's uh, morphed into that character? That's his identity. Yeah. Yes. It's like how P- Paul Rubens became Pee Wee Herman, and we all thought he was really Pee Wee Herman. People just call him Jake, and he just leans into it. Yeah. yeah. What's up, man? Dude, I started to uh, I started to hum the uh, Three Musketeers theme last night when they showed him. Uh, you had Kim Mulkey, Don Staley, and Jake from State Farm all together. <laughs> that's a panel. Now, that <laughs> that was, a, that's just right in itself. That is quite the couple. Then. Well, not even a couple. It's mornings with Sharp and Haley at sixteen twenty the zone. <laughs> Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone and 1620thezone.com with Gary Sharp and Nick Hanley. Is your concrete cracked or uneven? Hey everyone, Coach Greg McDermott here to explain why you should choose Everlevel Concrete Repair. Many people think they need to replace broken concrete, but repairing it provides durable protection and comes at a fraction of the cost. Everlevel provides permanent repair solutions to fix your concrete and protect it against future damage. And it all comes with a long-term transferable warranty. They offer free inspections to walk you through the entire process. Call Everlevel Concrete Repair today. Do you like to shoot fireworks? Would you like to get paid to shoot fireworks? JM Displays wants you. Help shoot an Omaha Storm Chasers game, Memorial Park Display, or any of the major shows in Western Iowa and all of Nebraska. If you like to travel, JM covers Nebraska, Kansas, and most of Missouri. They offer free training and great daily pay rates, which makes it a perfect part-time job. Visit JMDisplays.com and click the Join Our Team tab to find out more. JM Fireworks. You're sitting with a couple of pals at Backlot Tap House in X Urban Village when your server brings up this perfectly cooked smash burger. The smell of a juicy beef patty sends a waft of aroma right up your nose and your eyes instinctively close because, well, awesomeness. Your friends get their orders and you just kind of look at each other and think, yeah, this is going to be good. Backlot Tap House with 30 beers on tap, happy hour every day, trivia nights, live music, and more. X Urban Village and BacklotTapHouse.com. When I heard the words, you have breast cancer, I said, I have no idea what I'm going to do. My OBGYN called me and said, I know exactly what we're going to do, which led me to Nebraska Cancer Specialist. From day one, I felt that I was at the right place. There were some pretty rough times, but together we are stronger and they are there for you. You do not feel that you are alone. NebraskaCancer.com. 
I'm still going for it, even with higher stroke risk from atrial fibrillation and a regular heartbeat not caused by a heart valve problem. Over a three-year study, Eliquis Apixaban tablets reduced stroke risk better than warfarin, and over 97% of Eliquis patients did not experience a stroke. A first stroke occurred in 2.9% of warfarin patients versus 2.3% of Eliquis patients. Don't stop taking prescription Eliquis without asking your doctor. It may increase your stroke risk. Eliquis can cause serious and in rare cases fatal bleeding. Don't take Eliquis if you have an artificial heart valve, abnormal bleeding, or antiphospholipid syndrome. While taking, you may bruise more easily or take longer for bleeding to stop. A spinal injection while on Eliquis increases risk of blood clots, which may cause paralysis, the inability to move. Get medical help right away for unexpected bleeding, unusual bruising, or tingling, numbness, or muscle weakness. Medications such as aspirin products, NSAIDs, SSRIs, SNRIs, and blood thinners may increase bleeding risk. Tell your doctor about all planned medical or dental procedures. Learn more at Eliquis.com or call 1-855-ELIQUIS. Omaha Maverick baseball is on fire. Three straight series wins, and the Mavs lead the Summit League in conference wins. Tonight, the Mavs take on the Big 12 powerhouse Kansas Jayhawks at Dal Anderson Field. It's $2 Tuesday. All Pepsi products and Bush Light cans are $2 from when the doors open until the third inning. This weekend, Maverick baseball plays Northern Colorado and softball plays Kansas City. Both series are at Maverick Park. Get your tickets by calling 402-554-MAVS or by going to omavs.com slash ticks. Now back to mornings with Sharp and Hammond on 1620 The Zone. I guess technically we already have uh, the first Husker in the portal. Uh, Eric Fields is officially in the portal. Remember him? Yeah. I hopes. Um, let's see. So he got here late. Uh, very raw. I was excited about him. I thought the development piece would help him because mm-hmm. he left. And he he went home like the twelfth or thirteenth of October. Mm. I I was trying to remember when that was because when we were talking about some of the linebackers, just with Brian Christopherson, his name came up, and I remember that he wasn't with the team. And I was trying to remember when the heck he announced or it was known that he was no longer with the team and it would be in the transfer portal. Well, no one. So, you know, practice wasn't open and he was going to red shirt. Right. And so you had no idea that he was not in the program, but he left mid semester. And I don't know if it was homesickness or yeah. just a big jump to, you know, playing college football at a place like Nebraska, but never really gave himself a chance. And I think he was behind the eight ball when he came in. So I'd be curious, like you would think stay close to home, like a Tulsa would be an ideal spot for him. Or, you know, I don't, I don't know if Oklahoma or Oklahoma state would drop a scholarship in his lap, but a place like Tulsa, it's a little bit closer to home might be ideal for him. I, I'm intrigued by him. I, I think there's something there, but it just, I, I don't, I don't think he was ready to handle everything that goes with being a division one collegiate athlete. That was, that was just my feel. I was disappointed. I think I had him with my I think I had him as a sleeper. A lot of people did. Uh, I, I just remember him being talked about just with that raw. I mean, overall, his motor, his size, that there was a lot that you could work with. And this maybe goes back to the conversation we just had about getting, when you get guys in early, they feel like yeah. they're starting off with a lot of younger players too. You don't feel like you're getting a late start. And when you do feel like you're getting a late start, even if there are opportunities for you to catch up, you still kind of feel overwhelmed. Like, I get that if that was the case. But this is where I also look at, hey, I understand some people aren't always able to enroll early. But to me, these are the benefits, especially when you're a freshman. There's just that that feeling of you're right there with your peers going into fall where you know as much as they know. Hell, you might even know as, as much as some of the, the redshirt freshmen or sophomores as well. All right. Um, we've got, uh, we've got uh, some a war going on in Omaha uh, that has, that has just like a scud just got dropped oh, oh. in a, in a, in a fledgling, what could be a war in the winter uh, in this city. And it's hmm. big news, big news might leave a crater, Oh no! but choose your fighters. We don't need any more potholes um, because we'll tell you that big news concerning Nebraska just dropped 
Uh, get into that when we come back for the last hour of Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley returns in minutes on 1620 The Zone. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. 1620 The Zone. Traffic. From the Pyramid Roofing, time-saving traffic center. The earlier accident JFK southbound at Q Street on the right shoulder still being taken care of. This has traffic backed up to F Street currently. Other slow-moving traffic, I-80 eastbound between 84th and 72nd, as well as JFK northbound between Chandler and Q. Give yourself some extra time this morning due to the weather. Please be safe and wear that seatbelt and have a great rest of your Tuesday. I'm Peter Krenzer. Time-saving traffic is brought to you by Omaha Transmission. You've probably heard about Omaha Transmission saving people money. Call Omaha Transmission and see why people have been recommending them for almost 20 years. Omaha Transmission, shifting to money smooth. I want to learn how to cook, but I keep ordering takeout. I plan to rearrange my closet, but I stopped after picking the clothes up off the floor. Accomplishing goals is hard. But when your goal is to learn a new language, Babbel makes it easy. In just 15 minutes a day, Babbel's award-winning language learning app will help you start speaking another language. Start having conversations in as little as three weeks. Comment tu t'appelles? Comment tu t'appelles? Vous êtes où? Vous êtes où? Babbel's bite-sized lessons make it easy to learn words and phrases you'll actually use. So when someone asks, How's your French going? You can say, Babel est amusant et facilite grandement l'apprentissage d'une nouvelle langue. Et cela ne prend que 15 minutes par jour. When you want to really learn another language, it starts with Babel. Babel, language for life. Celebrating 10 million subscriptions sold. Now try Babel for free at Babel.com. Just go to Babel.com and start learning a new language today. That's Babel.com. B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Watching a ball game at Oscar's Pizza and Sports Grill is pretty awesome. Oscar's offers the MLB package, so your team is always on their upgraded audio video system, and nothing is better than watching the game with a cold, frosty one, Oscar's Pizza, or award winning char buffed wings. And with daily lunch and dinner specials, it's really a no brainer. So get ready to watch your favorite team play ball at Oscar's Pizza and Sports Grill, 173rd and West Center Road, and takeout at 162nd in Maple. It's time to spring into performance in a new Acura from Acura of Omaha. While they last, choose from 50 new Acuras in stock, Integras, TLXs, RDXs, and MDXs. Acura of Omaha, always open at acuraofomaha.com. I have never seen this before. Hi, John with Saul's Jury and Loan. The price of gold is the highest it's ever been. Now is the time to get the best price on your broken jewelry, chains, and diamond jewelry. Saul's has been around a while, and trust us, Now's the time. Saul's Jewelry and Loan. With spring Black Friday savings at the Home Depot, you can get up to $2,300 off select kitchen packages from top brands like GE Profile. That means you can save on a new GE Profile smart quad door refrigerator that's full of convenient features like a dual dispense auto fill pitcher and an ice dispenser with up to 12 and a half pounds capacity. Bring convenience to your kitchen with smart, innovative appliances from GE Profile. Right now, save up to $2,300 on select kitchen packages with spring Black Friday savings at The Home Depot. How doers get more done. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential. But finding those people can be a major hassle. Unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. Now back to mornings with Sharp and Hamlin on 1620 The Zone.
All right, and then there were two. Angel Reese is on the Today Show. Can't wait for the uh, first Indiana-Chicago game in the WNBA. Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark go at each other. Uh, One thing, uh, uh, because I'll I'll say we have Nebraska football news here in just a second. Um, Did you know on the Saturday Night Live, you know, when uh, Caitlin Clark was giving flowers to all the greats, she left one person out? Who did she leave out? I'm trying to remember. Who is she having beef with or is wants to beef with her? Because oh, yes. to have beef has to go two yes. ways. Did she not mention Lynette? No, 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 no. Tarasi. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. That's good. Yeah. Uh, but look at that. Angel Reese is on uh the Today Show today. I'd be getting the everybody's still in New tough. York. I'd be tough. Tough. That's early in the morning. Uh <laughs> we have a second uh, Nebraska football player that's in the uh, portal, but nobody that you would go, oh my gosh, did they just walk off the practice field in front of the media and immediately go in the portal? <laughs> Uh, Corey Collier is uh, in the portal who transferred from Florida, uh, basically just played special teams last year. Mm-hmm. Thought he would thought he'd be more of a contributor. But there's a guy that this is a wise portal move uh, because he saw the writing on the wall. Uh, you have essentially the starting safety spots are filled up with guys that either were here last year or have earned them. And then you sat there in your apartment in Lincoln and watch Nebraska add 10 defensive backs in the off season. Yeah. So he, uh, he never came back to school. So he hasn't been at Nebraska for this semester. He not going through spring ball or anything like that. So he is uh, number two in the portal. And you're right. There's nothing yet between the, the official enter of fields and now Collier of, I think that it was brought up early in spring too. Of, it, of Collier that he wasn't there. Um, I thought, no, I, it, I thought somebody had no, he was. That. I think it was. I think it was pretty well known when they started winter conditioning that he did not come back to school. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'm thinking of winter conditioning. Yeah, that might be. I'm not spring, but winter conditioning. But I remember it being brought up at some point with somebody that. Yeah, there's been no call here at all. So okay, so we're gonna have some confusion in the winter around here. Uh-oh. Uh, you know the Omaha Supernovas. Mm-hmm. They're about three months into their inaugural pro volleyball <laughs> pro volleyball federation season. They've drawn good crowds. Yep. I they get a lot of attention. I, I went to a match. Um, they do. They put on a good show. Like I, it's it's tough because I'm so used to Nebraska volleyball at the Devaney Center mm-hmm. and knowing all the players. And so I I don't know many of the players' names. You know, they don't have like any former Huskers playing for them. But they do put on a really good show, and they have a I don't know some dedicated fans. Um. This is absolutely ridiculous what is going to happen in this town. I know we love volleyball, but we're talking about two pro volleyball teams are going to be in Omaha mm-hmm. next winter. So you have the Pro Volleyball Federation. This is like the old wrestling wars. Of, uh, of, good comparison. You have LOVB, Omaha Volleyball. LOVB. What is this league? I don't know. Oh, it's League One Volleyball. Thank you, Sharp. Um, It's a six-team pro league. Uh, It is also going to link up with club volleyball teams in each city. Omaha has a team in this. So you have the Supernovas who got a year start, and so they're established. And, you know, I mean, they're aggressive in the community. Uh, They're active in the community. Uh, They advertise. Um, You know, they get a lot of attention. That league, I I think, is doing pretty well. Mm Mm-hmm. So Omaha is going to have two pro volleyball teams next winter. This is dumb. <laughs> but if you're going to play this game, you got to play with a name. You need a hook. Jordan Larson is going to play for this team. Yeah. So and she's good. Well, I mean, people don't three-time know. All-American, yeah. Olympic champion. Yeah. You know, legend. She she's she starts on the U.S. team, outside hitter. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean. She's one of those names that in the volleyball circles, if she's in your league, you go, Mm -hmm. whoa. So fighting fire with fire. Um, The Supernovas now have some competition, and Jordan Larson is on the other side. Uh, uh, Justine. Uh, Justine Mm Wong-Arantes is uh, another player on that team. When I went to their website a little bit ago, that's the only person I saw that was mentioned on on the team. 
I think it's still a work in progress. They're still well, assembling that they, roster. So I, I I don't necessarily know the Omaha team, but I know Kelsey Robinson. Uh, I guess it's Kelsey Cook now. Um, Laura Stiverens and Maddie Kubik, I think, are all scheduled to play in the league. So there will be more of a Nebraska connection. Huh. Yeah. So I also think, uh, thank you, Pat. Pat says this new league will have the Olympic players. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh now, man. Now, where are they going to play? Rolston? Baxter? Baxter, Here? baby. I I thought Baxter should have housed uh, Supernovas. I don't know, I don't know but, what the rent is downtown. Yeah. Um, but the rent probably isn't, you know, I mean, it's not as high as the CHI, but oh, well, the Supernovas have shown they can draw. 11, yeah, 12, that is 000. true. So in the winter, we're going to have two professional volleyball teams here. Mm-hmm. Not in the same league. It's like the NFL, will people, AFL thing. Will people just embrace it because it's great volleyball and maybe embrace one league more than the other because there's more of a Husker connection yeah. and Olympians playing? Uh, and you'll just watch oof. because you love volleyball and one night you'll wear a Supernova jersey and the next you'll wear a League One volleyball jersey. Man. We should bring Nick in here to talk about that because he's a frequent attender at the Supernovas game. So this is a great question for him. Are you going to go to all of them? Or are you going to choose one or the other? I don't know. I, I, I get, wor- I get worried that you are now starting to dilute the product with more options of, and you're 100% right on how the Supernovas went about promoting their brand. They have been everywhere. They were doing things from the time it was announced, you would see them at car washes. You would see them in parades, handing out gear to people, just embracing themselves with the community that I think they really did win over the community. My biggest fear now, you throw a different option and Jordan Larson is your headliner. This to me, I don't, I don't think we can have, I don't think we could have two and expect both to be successful and have a consistent attendance night in and night out. I just, I've got my doubts. I know it's pro volleyball and they're incredible athletes. Yes. And I think volleyball has to be consumed in person to really understand how gifted high level volleyball players are. It's not old GBR. I had trouble being entertained and just like focused at a supernova match. Again, they put on a great show. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very family and fan friendly. Yeah. But in terms of like, living and dying on every point like you do at the Devaney Center. Right, right. I just couldn't get into it. So, full disclosure, I did not stay for the entirety of a match. Well, I, told, I, I texted Baylor and I said, hey, not tonight, man. I'm, I'm <laughs> We're going over to the old mattress factory. <laughs> I'm going over to watch some basketball. Yeah, come over and meet us afterward. <laughs> so it does show, like, you know, we're, we're, we have three Division I NCAA volleyball programs yep. in the state, and we're all kind of spoiled because that's all high-level volleyball. The pro volleyball, I think, is, you know, these are pros for a reason, but I just couldn't I couldn't get into like the match. Well, but I, but if you're telling me you've got this array of former Huskers and Olympians. Oh, there'll be interest. Yeah. Man, the, wow. the, there'll be interest. Cooking with some peanut oil. Now, the best way that I would compare what you're seeing with the Omaha Supernovas is very similar to what you see with the Omaha Storm Chasers. Now, Storm Chasers has been doing it for a very long time, but people show up. I think the majority of people show up because they have families. They want to be entertained. The result at the end of the game isn't necessarily going to ruin their day or night. More importantly for those families are, did they have fun? Did the kids enjoy it? Do they want to come back? And you'd be dumb not to cater to those folks because those are your, your people that are going to come back, and they're going to come back with multiple people, they're going to spend money because they do have the kids or maybe the birthday party, the occasional birthday party or whatever it might be. There are diehard baseball fans that go because they want to see the baseball. There are diehard you know, Kansas City Royal fans that want to see the up-and-coming prospects, but a lot of that is going to be catered to the families and the, the venue itself as opposed to the result. I think the Omaha Supernova is the same way. It doesn't mean it's, it's, a, it's a good business model, but as far as your overall interest comparing it to what you see in a Nebraska match versus Penn State or versus Wisconsin as opposed to what you see whoever the Omaha Supernova's chief rival will be, you're not going to have that same type of anticipation of the match itself. In I think my there's going to be confusion. Oh, That's absolutely. Like you're going to wonder why, why can't they play each other? Yeah. Can, can the Supernova's trade for Jordan Larson? 
but it's just down the street. How can they not? Now, you knew there was a second pro volleyball team coming. And it's been in development for a while. Yes. So you knew that that was happening. But now that you can put some faces, and in this case, a face, a very recognizable, very talented face, with the new club? Yeah. Now, this new league could get a really good bump because, I mean, we'll be watching in August the Paris games. So, yep. for example, let's yep. say... Jordan Larson and the U.S. wins a medal and her teammates, all of a sudden they're playing in this league and mm-hmm. you just watched them because Olympic volleyball is unbelievable. Yep. You're watching them and so you recognize names and all of a sudden they're playing in your city against players that played in college. Yeah, that, that's that's the leg you have up on them. But this is going to be confusing. This, come it on. It is. We're, we're a big city but and we love our volleyball. And we love our youth volleyball, and I'm glad that they're tied into club volleyball and helping grow the sport in their respective cities. Mm-hmm. I just don't, I don't see how this ends well. I'm with you. I just, it, you're gonna you're gonna be splitting the fan base. Gonna be taking people from one to the other. I think you're gonna, and it's it's probably gonna be the fans that are attracted to certain things. Whether you're more attracted to the talent that's on the court, or you're more attracted to, like I said. More the minor league venue uh, of of family friendly atmospheres. How's the media going to cover this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. seriously, you have one volleyball beat writer. Now we got the what? What are they even called? The new one? Uh, they haven't named their team yet. Okay, we'll we'll pick a name. Yeah, this it's the Omaha Big Reds. Yeah, named just, after Gun. Just just lean into it. Might just as well lean into it. Get a bunch of former Huskers on top of uh, Jordan Larson and gosh, it, when, and when I say diluted, it doesn't mean the quality all of a sudden drastically goes down, but There's as far so as money to go around. Yeah. Huh? And the options you're, you're, you're diluting what I think is a, a cool thing. If it's unique to the market, one team means it's unique Two ain't unique. Uh, so uh, Pat here who Pat is uh, dialed into the volleyball world in the state of Nebraska. He said, Atlanta will have a team in both leagues too. Okay. And this league will not have nicknames. Oh, okay. okay. So they just be like Club Omaha? No, just Omaha. Just yeah. Omaha? Okay. I think that's at 120th and center. Well, that guy won't quit. <laughs> the media loves that I guy. that has nothing to do with the volleyball team. Yes, that's true. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, we are going to have to uh, reschedule Andy Candy uh, oh. because... Um, is, they, he on, is he on severe weather coverage? No, they uh, are just letting the media in. Oh, so the running has just begun. Yes. <laughs> Is he okay? He said he's fine. Okay, good. He said uh, anyone get gored? They're um, <laughs> they were running. They were running late. God, I wish they would do that. So they let the portal guys go before the media got there. <laughs> mm. Nope. Sorry, guys, got to delay this. I'll come running in like Caddy Day at Bushwood. Like, like from yeah. a, from afar, if you don't know, <laughs> if you don't know the story of like Corey Collier and Eric Fields, you're probably like, oh my gosh. Here, you could spin this a couple of ways. That defense is so good, guys are leaving because they know they're not going to get to play. Yeah, yeah. What's Rule doing? That's two guys on the first day. Yeah, and spring practice is going on in the first two hours, and they'll be like, ah, uh, those guys haven't been here for a while. Yeah. I just curious, like about Jeff Sims. Does Jeff Sims want to play football? That's what I want. To See, do that's, my question. And that's, that's my question. That's my question. Somebody, but, somebody in the stream had brought up he's more of an FCS Division II guy, and I would have thought, yeah, if he wants to play FCS, there probably would have been some landing spots he, for sure. So I don't know enough about the portal. Like he went into the portal the first time and didn't end up anywhere. Do you have to recommit to the portal? Like, <laughs> do you have to put your name in again? Hey, I'm I'm still here. Or does it like carry there's, over and they there's take, like lag time? They take a thousand guys and they just drop them in the spring portal and they go. These guys had no home. Yeah, find them a home. The portal goes to sleep, yeah. so you have to refresh it if you're Jeff Sims. Uh, final on the LOVB. They, these are good markets: Omaha, Austin, Madison, Houston, Salt Lake City, Atlanta. <laughs> Madison. You have you have the top three that are really good college volleyball markets. Yeah, and you'll probably and get you know some and you know Wisconsin that Madison players. will have Wisconsin players, yep. Austin will have Texas players, yep. Omaha will. Have Yep. Mm. Poll question: Who lasts longer? Oh boy! I just it'd be uh, it'd be kind of confusing. Very confusing. Best of the best will be playing here. Good luck to you all. Okay. 
Uh, all right, nine twenty uh, three. Uh, when we uh, come back, a uh, little bit more on uh, spring football, uh, among other things. And don't forget Nebraska Creighton baseball right ton- uh, tonight here on the uh, zone. Will Bolt wins? They might build a statue. Everybody wants to build statues of people these days. Is that, yeah, is that how we commemorate just a, a good win or a good season? Build you get a, a statue. statue. Lots of statues. Oh, get a statue Lots of now. statue talk going on in sports. Has the Hoiberg statue begun? Got, got to win in the NCAA. Oh, that's game. true. Yeah, you got, that's right. You got to win the tournament. I don't know. I heard on this radio that's station last night that he might be fired after next year. Oh. Whoa. Hmm. I wonder okay. which show said that. <laughs> that should be the poll question. <laughs> in 1620, the zone. <laughs> Gary Sharp, Nick Hanley, and Jimmy Chavez. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley. Weekdays 6 to 10. On 1620 The Zone and 1620thezone.com. Previously on The Crossover. I have mostly sports things that I want nothing to do with muted. Okay. Major League Baseball, muted. Baseball, <laughs> muted. I thought you loved the Mets. Uh, I did. Yeah. Mahomes, Chiefs. Harbaugh, Wolverines, Michigan, FIFA World Cup, Goal? Qatar, Goal. World Cup, VAR, USMTNC, World suck. Cup, Wordle. I got lots on here. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley, the Connor Happer Show, unsportsmanlike conduct, 6A to 6P, 1620, The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620, The Zone. Strong to severe storms possible Tuesday morning, mainly before 10 a.m. in the metro. We'll see some clearing through the middle of the day with windy conditions persisting, then more scattered showers and storms possible in the afternoon into the evening. Highs in the mid-70s. I'm meteorologist Sean Everson from KETV News Watch 7. Hi, this is John Bishop. Since the day I got my driver's license, I've had a check next to the organ and tissue donor box. It's a selfless gift because healthy organ donors can save up to eight lives. And with tissue donation, dozens more can get the gift of sight and burn victims can get life-changing skin grafts. Anybody can register and there's no cost to you or your family. Check that organ donor box next time you renew your license or visit goodguyssavelives.com. Learn more about organ and tissue donation today and see how you can save eight lives at goodguyssavelives.com. At Cox Mobile, we know you're smart. You brush your teeth in the shower to save time. (laughs) Make coffee ice cubes for your cold brew. Mm. And wear goggles to cut onions. You also added Cox Mobile. So smart. Now you're running on the network with unbeatable 5G reliability and saving on your Cox internet. It's ingenious, just like you. Aw, thanks. Cox Mobile, the smart way to mobile. Cox postpaid internet required. Cox Mobile runs on the network with unbeatable 5G reliability as measured by Ookla LLC in the U.S. to H 2023. Other restrictions apply. Learn more at cox.com slash mobile. News Talk 1290 Coil is your radio home for Omaha Storm Chasers baseball. Proud AAA affiliate of the Kansas City Royals. Tune in to hear every pitch, every hit, and every out as the Chasers play at Warner Park and across the International League in 2024. With the voice of the Omaha Storm Chasers, Nick Batters, on News Talk 1290 Coil. The Storm Chasers travel to Music City to take on the Nashville Sounds tonight. First pitch is scheduled for 635. Listen to the game on your home for Storm Chasers baseball. 1290 Coil. Like eating out? Like saving money? Then get to Cobb's at 180th and Center, Shadow Lake Town Center, or 72nd and Jones for their daily specials. Tuesday is $3 off all burgers and sandwiches. Wednesday, buy any specialty pizza and get a one-topping 50% off. Then Thursday, all wings are a dollar each when you order 10. And this just in, all Cobb's locations now offer their own delivery service. Click Cobb'sPizza.com to see the menu. Cops pizza, and so much more. OSI Oakland is hiring maintenance mechanics for all shifts starting at $22.50 an hour with a retention bonus for all new hires. OSI Oakland offers great benefits including medical, dental, vision, and 401k, plus a retention bonus. Apply now at osigroup.com slash careers or at their plant Monday and Wednesday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Must have ID and wear closed toe and heeled shoes to enter the plant. OSI is an equal opportunity employer. Bonuses are subject to eligibility and program requirements. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than they're worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor 
and Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now, get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. You're going to feel a puff of air. Jong's optometry oh. has set their sights on staffing up. Try the next line. Hey, Kim, can you tell our 2 o'clock we're running 15 behind? Sorry, we're a bit backed up today. He needs an optometric now, technician to keep an eye on it all. Where are the dilation drops? Indeed can help him hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit Indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. Now back to Mornings with Sharp and Hamlet on 1620 The Zone. All right, to be fair, uh, good news, a P1 in the station. Andrew, who was with Jimmy last night, the Andrew Duncan, um, did a really nice job. Uh, I hope, I, oh, you know, Shriner is away. I hope uh, they have Andrew in the uh, mix there. Did Shriner get Wally pipped? No, he's uh, he's out uh, doing a little business. Oh, uh, Andrew said, he said Fred would be fired after the 25-26 season. Oh, 25, okay. All right, so it at least gives him a, a year, year enjoy the incident. Uh, <laughs> the more talk about Nebraska basketball Another and year. what they're doing with the roster just reiterates the point even more. Bryce Williams needs to be a bigger dude than he was last year. Yeah. Like Bryce Williams needs to be an all conference guy. 30 minutes, a, 30 minutes a game, 15 points, six rebounds minimum. He's got to shoot about 40% mm -hmm. from three point range as they, as they construct this roster. And I think they feel good about the guy from Rutgers. Um, I think they made some progress on William Kyle. Not, not where I'm like, Oh, Nebraska is the favorite, but as they construct this roster, all I can think of Bryce Williams needs to be all conference. Mm -hmm. Nebraska to get back to where they were this year. And I think he's got the ability to do that. The way that he ended the season, and you before that, when he actually strung five or six games together there towards the end of the year where he was a major, major factor, then you could go back into certain games where it might have been the first half, might have been the second half, where he asserted himself. And he at, at times would take over in consecutive possessions where he looked like he had the confidence to be that guy. So I think it was very encouraging to see the way that he ended the season because there were moments in the season that you would kind of forget where he was and you would be looking at what Casey's doing and then Casey would go cold and you're looking around, okay, can Rink knock a couple of down? Then you're thinking, wait, what about Bryce Williams? But I was very encouraged the way that he ended the season. How come Rink Mass hasn't put out a video yet? I don't know if he knows what he's doing. Yet. So Nebraska has have five scholarships available? Mm-hmm. Rink Mast hasn't said if he's coming back or not. Nope. And we need a video? Yep. We gotta know. And then it's gonna be the whole, oh, I thought you guys already knew I was coming back. Do I need to make a video? Do I need to make that announcement? Yeah, you do. That's where we are. All right. No AK here. Uh, he's uh, watching uh, grown men crash into each other in the fourth week of uh, spring ball. Oh, I thought you were like, talking about the running to the, the scribes again. No. Uh, it seems like spring football has going on for a long time. It but, took us a while before we started talking about it because well, yeah. we were paying attention to a lot of basketball. Oh, hoops. Now it seems now it seems like I, I want the spring game this weekend. <laughs> no, I get what you said because yesterday you were talking about well, everything's boring. So let's keep it that It's usually way. this so, weekend. I, so here's the storyline of, of Nebraska spring football. These are the themes. Nebraska's building depth. They've had a good spring. No injuries, which is the most important thing of anything yep. during spring. And the quarterbacks have been as advertised they're competent enough that you can change your win total by a win and a half. Uh, Jamal Banks is the real deal, and Riley Van Poppel needs to play more. Now, also in that mix is the Hill brothers, not related. I've had a nice spring. <laughs> and Isaac Gifford is a football player, yep. like just a, a flat-out football player. But it's, it's, it, it's been an ideal spring for Nebraska because they haven't had any drama, haven't had any injuries. Again, most important. And they've been able to get a lot of work in with all the reps that they've had. And I think it's when they go to fall camp, maybe not officially or not, 
they will only have a couple of spots that are open that are up for grabs and starting. I think they will have, on one hand, the number of, of positions that are truly open to have a battle. I think everything else is going to be pretty much sewn up, whether they say it publicly or not. Yeah. And so, so there you go. So that's 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 an that's a nice thing to have going yeah. into the fall because they can't. They're not going to mess around in the fall. I mean, they're going to hit the ground and they're going to get going. And to have guys that have gone through spring that have all those reps, and also you know who your main guys are going to be, then you start working on UTEP, Colorado. Yep. You start working on future opponents instead of teaching you're installing quicker yeah and that's that's what i when you thought about it it made sense but hearing you mentioned gifford and some of the other guys on the defensive side nash talking about it as well of their familiarity with the system where they were a year ago of the install of that getting the concepts down uh, there was the great analogy that um was brought up about the the new house and I, I just you think about how good not just the defense, but this team with a lot of of the pieces, whether we're talking about offensive line and the quarterbacks just getting a chance to experience that, sort of push each other, but experience that in the spring, that you do have guys that are going to get into the fall that it's not necessarily going to be about, okay, the system itself and where they need to be, the playbook itself, where they need to be, that a lot of these guys are so in tune to it that it's about just their individual fine-tuning and where you can throw a lot more at them and probably gain so much more ground this time from compared to a year ago. And when you get into the fall, how much more ground that you can gain in development and getting ready for this season. That, to me, is the, exciting, the most exciting thing about what this team has because of the amount of experience that comes back that went through that very – critical part of laying that foundation, but it's been laid. And now you've got other guys that are following suit because going back to the reps and how they run practices, even in spring, when they go through all of this, how much more adjusted they're going to be. All right. So I'm, I'm, I'm ready to get rid of spring games for the most part, more fun, less football. Um, I, I think guys should sit out. I actually think Nebraska should sit a lot of guys next Saturday. I especially think a lot of defensive guys should not play in this game. Um, that's just the way it is. They've done their work. They got their work in. There's no, do not put yourself in the chance of being an injury, having an injury yep. that just, just wrecks. Yeah. Get they, out. Yeah. Sit. I hope they sit a lot of guys. I hope they have a lot of load management for the spring game. And I'm fine for it because now spring game should be about the younger players. Mm -hmm. Let's get a look at yeah. guys that haven't played very much. Okay. Let's put them under the lights. The other guys we've seen, man, they played before 90,000 before. So I'm, I'm more into younger guys. And I think we're seeing that around spring. Lane Kiffin has got it more fun. Less football. But there are places where people are going to come watch because you've always supported it, whether it be in Columbus, whether it be in State College, whether it be in Tuscaloosa or in Lincoln. You know, Nebraska will have 60,000 uh, for their spring game. And it's it's one of the weird debates like, hey, look at the attendance I had at my Tupperware party. <laughs> oh, look at what the attendance I had at my spring game. I mean, it, it shows that you support football yeah, year round. Yeah. But I'm not having a measuring contest about, hey, you guys had 80. We had 81,000. Right. Now, am I a little surprised that there's 50,000 tickets out? A little bit, because there is head, new head coaches draw some, you know, like, oh, let's go oh, see yeah. this. Let's see the system. Quarterback battle draws this, and you have mm -hmm. the most celebrated quarterback that's ever come to Nebraska. I wonder, in Nebraska's case, in the pre-sale, ticket prices have gone up. So... It's 15 and 25 oh. are the ticket prices. And then I didn't know this. Has this always been the case that if you're 18 and under, you got in for free? I thought that that was younger than that. Because 18 and 17? under now is a $5 ticket. That's it? Okay. Yeah, I thought if you said, uh, I'm going to say no to drugs with T.O. Yeah. at halftime. You got in for free. You got in for free and you got to yeah. run on the field. I was yeah. going to try that. I'll say no. See, that's one of the things they took away. Damn. They COVID. haven't done the pledge Damn forever. COVID. Yeah, COVID. And, and then you had... I yes. mean, you can't have a coach up there saying, hey, say no to drugs and they got to dip in. I think that's like, <laughs> that's, that. that's awkward. Yeah. Um, now it's jerky stuff. But now it's like $5 for 18 and under. Hmm. Inflation, man. Yeah, I, I always thought, it, I thought you were free, maybe not up to 18. I thought it was 12 and under or 16 and under. I, I guess I didn't know it was 18, but. How old are you, sir? Six. Yeah, like a five-year-old. We went to a, 
went to a Miller North uh, soccer game last night, and I just brought Reese. They didn't even they didn't even blink. They were like, all right, you know, you, you pay your adult fee. There's no yeah kids get him for free. They didn't even they even look at him. They're like, yeah, hey, have fun. Come on, that should. I mean, see, it's <laughs> especially with what you're what you're consuming, like a, as the fan, what you're yeah. consuming as a young person. It's not to me. It's not worth that. It's like a family reunion is what spring football is. People you haven't seen since last football season. Yeah. You get to see a little football. You got two hours. Every coach just wants to get through it. Right. Without injuries, get through it. Let everybody have a little experience. But I'm I'm into resting guys. Those guys have put in 14 practices. You know exactly what they knew. Let's play the younger guys. We always clamor in the fall. Like once the season gets started, we're like, hey, tell me about some of the younger guys that are red shirt and yeah. how they doing behind closed doors. No, let's play him in the spring. Yeah, you see him in full speed. Yeah. Well, you got to see what your depth is. If you have injuries, you got to know what's there. So this is also curious. And, and you know, I, I already know that we're NFL light. So I would like to see, like, you know, what we do in the NFL and training camp. Hey, let's say the boys from Brookings or oh, yeah. the guys from Ames come on over to Lincoln in August and you yeah. have a little scrimmage on the weekend. I love what the the levels down from FBS and FCS are doing mm-hmm. here in the spring that they can actually have a scrimmage against each other. Like, you know, Carney scrimmaged over at Lewis Central the other day. Didn't junior colleges um, do that too? But yeah. I don't, do they? I, I thought they did, yeah. Iowa Western still plays a spring game, but I don't, I think it's just their blue just, and white just game. Okay. So as we move forward and spring games take on a different kind of feel, and you have, of course, bowl games that will not be in the 12-team playoff, what are you more likely to get hot takes out of? A meaningless bowl game or spring football? Spring football. Yeah. Absolutely spring football because you haven't seen the season yet. And this goes back to even when we would see guys. But uh, wait a minute. I everybody thought, used, I thought, used the Breon no, Cards no, no, no. example. Thought, I thought bowl games were a precursor to the following season. Used to be. Uh, th- sure, there was. Yeah. Yeah, Jimmy, you're right. There was a time that it did used to be that. You used to be able to drive to road games too. Now your participation level in those games, and I think even in the, the non uh, playoff era games where if you're a coach and you maybe see it as a reward to play some of your younger guys, hey, you got a four, uh, fourth game that we can use without burning a red shirt? Let's see. Let, let's let the kid play. So the way that they're even managed, even if you do have your full assortment of a roster, are completely different. It's it, the, the, the whole bowl system, the whole bowl games, non-New Year's Six and non-playoff are, are completely different. Just protect the Pop-Tarts Bowl, that's all. And and it's and let, let's be honest, it's it's pretty ridiculous to have major hot takes after a spring game too. Oh, that hasn't stopped us. No, it, absolutely, it hasn't. But when you think about it, and we've had plenty of examples of guys that walked away from the spring game, like there's your MVP. What's he gonna do in the fall? Boy, did you see him that spring game though? He looked like he could do something. Wait, why is he not playing? Well, he must be injured. Because I saw him on that Saturday at Memorial Stadium. He looked great. Man, Breon Carnes is a stud. Uh, who was the running back? Not It wasn't White Missouri. It was uh, the kid from Millard West. Brody Bell. Yep. Had a really good uh, – and he, you know, he factored in a little bit, but he was a reserve. He was a spot-type guy. But you're watching the spring, you're like, damn. He could give you a workload of 25 carries for maybe a buck 10. Let's go. So – I still think it's always going to be spring because you're trying to pick out the guys that you feel could be the sleeper, could be the X factor that we didn't hear as much about. And then you seem smart when it happens. Like, yeah, picked him. I did. I well, found him. And, I bought him. And this year's a great example of the young players, the amount of guys that you have as early enrollees. If you see them and you're watching what they can do, you're like, geez, this kid's a freshman right now? He doesn't look like it, or he's not playing like it. I think there's going to be a lot of playing time for this freshman. So I, I And I, some of that can actually carry into the fall. Some of those, those hot takes or opinions of what you saw from this person, hey, it might come to fruition. The hey, bowl games, are, the bowl games we, as far as takeaways, are ridiculous. We should go back to 1961 when they had the varsity versus the alumni. Oh, my God, they had that? Yeah, they had an alumni game. Yeah, thankfully for Nebraska, the varsity in the ten games they played against the alumni went eight one and one. Just looking here, so this is how <laughs> spring games have changed. Under varsity JV, uh, we have not had an addition to the spring game record book individual, individual since two thousand six when Titus Brothers returned a kickoff for the white team hundred yards. 
Mm. Now we've had like team records, but nothing individually. Yep. You guys know who won last year, right? Who won the spring game last year? Yeah. Uh, I believe it was Team White. White's on a three game winning streak. Yeah. Remember what happened in that game last year? Yeah, there's a lot of turnovers. Cold, too. A lot of turnovers. Um, and it wasn't Jeff Sims, of all people. No, no, it was. Yeah. I, no, he no, had one, yeah. didn't he? I thought he just had he one. Looked, he didn't. He didn't look so good. No, yeah. he didn't, but he was also very vanilla. I thought he only had one. I thought he had more than one because I remember ta- we talked about it on Monday. We were like, yeah, it's okay. It's just spring game. Yeah, we, we were like, ah, you know oh, what? Yeah. It, wasn't, it wasn't his fault. Yeah, that, maybe that's what it was. Maybe that's why yeah. in my head. Everyone he wasn't there that yet. many. No. But I, I give credit to Rule <laughs> because he has already – he has already laid out that uh, um, this will, you know, it, it will not be, it will not be a uh, a normal game, like a normal spring game. Yeah, I think they will rest or not rest, but they just to avoid injury, they will sit. Like you, there is no reason to play your front line defensive line no. guys. Nope. Okay, because you have depth there, and so let the second and third yeah. teamers let's see what's go there. out and play. Like other positions where it's already established their you know, starting yeah. lineup. What mm-hmm. What is Saturday going to do that? What is next Saturday going to do that? Jalen Daniels played three plays last Friday night, my friend told me. Devin Neal played three plays. They probably, saw him run. Oh, you're good. Sit it down. Probably, See you in three, August. probably three more than he needed to. That's what I said. I was like, honestly, you just let him run for a touchdown. Give him the, yeah. You know. uh, the running backs, that one's going to be interesting just because you have guys that are not participating or at least cannot withstand contact right now. But yeah, defensive line, hell, there's even offensive linemen. Wow. If you, you hear what, what Matt Rule is talking about, what Donovan Rilo was talking about last week as far as the depth is concerned, you give those twos and threes, threes and fours, all of the reps. I forget we had Richard Torres who was still here last year playing oh, yeah. in this game. Oh, yeah, he was. He was one of the first out afterwards. And then uh, remember when uh, Bonner was a fullback? Yes. Yes, I do. Yeah, those were good times. Uh, Caden Proctor officially in the portal. I wonder where he'll go to school, Iowa State? (laughs) (laughs) We'll come back and put a wrap on this show. (laughs) 1620 The Zone. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone and 1620TheZone.com with Gary Sharp and Nick Hanley. The Huskers, and even you Jaskers. We are 1620 The The Zone. Zone. Forget the drive to Colorado or Missouri. Dub into any Omaha 42 degrees and indulge in a curated cannabis experience. Premium flower, cannabis, pre-rolls, and cannabis accessories paired with an elevated customer service experience. All are waiting for you at 42 degrees. From novices to connoisseurs, we are here to elevate your cannabis journey. 42 degrees, your destination for top-tier cannabis, second-to-none product selection, and exceptional service by your mob's house. I've never seen this. John Deneen from Saul's Jury and Loan. I've never seen the price of gold as high as it is right now, which means you could be sitting on a gold mine yourself. Bring us in your broken gold chains, gold rings, and diamond jewelry. You'll never get a better price for those items. Saul's knows jewelry, and we've been around, and we've never seen gold this high. Sell your gold with confidence at Saul's Jury and Loan at any of our six convenient locations. Find it all at Saul's, Saul's Jury and Loan. Find it all at Saul's, Saul's Jury and Loan. Hey, baseball fans, join the Blur Tailgate at Hilton Omaha this June for our 12th annual hospitality event during the College Baseball Championship Series. Book an experience for your clients or employees with an inclusive bar, buffet, TVs, music, and tailgate games. Secure your spot today and let Blur Events take care of all the work so you can enjoy the day. Plus, we're just steps away from Charles Schwab Field. Visit BlurEvents.com to book your group, buy tickets, or learn about sponsorships. That's BlurEvents.com, your college baseball and football tailgate destination. You're sitting with a couple of pals at Backlot Tap House in X Urban Village when your server brings up this perfectly cooked smash burger. The smell of a juicy beef patty sends a waft of aroma right up your nose and your eyes instinctively close because, well, awesomeness. Your friends get their orders and you just kind of look at each other and think, yeah, this is going to be good. Backlot Tap House with 30 beers on tap, happy hour every day, trivia nights, live music, and more. X Urban Village and BacklotTapHouse.com.
Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same, but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash radio. Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash radio and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash radio. That's hymns.com slash radio for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash R-A-D-I-O. You still have time to get signed up for this year's Leahy Clawson Maverick Run this Saturday at Baxter Arena. The race has something for every type of runner with a one-mile kids race, a 5K walk or run, or a 10K run. New this year, the 5K and 10K courses are certified. Plus, there's a kid zone inside Baxter Arena. The event starts at 8 a.m. this Saturday. Go to omavs.com slash maverick run to find out more information and get signed up. All proceeds go to Omaha Women's Athletics. It's the Maverick Run at Baxter Arena. Saturday. See you there. And we're back. Mornings with Sharp and Handy. Here's Gary, Nick, and Jimmy on 1620 The Zone. The rumor about Rory McIlroy has to be nonsense, right? I just saw that. It has to be. Of a move? Yes. Yeah. I think so. It would kill the PGA Tour. Yeah. PGA Tour would be done. And also it would, you'd be done with Rory McIlroy. He'd be the biggest hypocrite around. No. If, That's the thing. If he made the move to live to get the $850 million, which is being reported, Jeez. and ownership stake, especially after he got his butt kicked at Augusta, mm-hmm. and he jumps... After everything that he has said, he'd be the biggest hypocrite all time in sports, and it would the PGA Tour would be. So I, but it it has to be nonsense. I just don't, just don't see him doing that. No, and and Gary, you remember this over the last year, there have been strong indicators that have proven to be false of a handful of guys I can think of. JT at one point was on his way out to live. Jordan Spieth was on his way out to live. Ricky Fowler was on his way out to live. The only thing about the Roy thing, and I thought about this four or five months ago when he basically gave up all of his responsibilities with the PGA board and yeah. and being one of the, the the tour the player spokesmen. He and he got really soft on the on his stance on live, where I think a lot of people started reading into what does this mean? Does this mean that He's all of a sudden starting to think about the grass being greener on the other side. I just think his game, he felt suffered because he was taking on more of a stance and being that spokesman and trying to be that sounding board and really back up the PGA on this. That I think he, and he essentially said as much that he lost the focus where it needed to be on his game. So I, I chalk that up to nothing more than Rory just wants to be Rory McElroy, the golfer. But you're absolutely right. If this somehow turned out to be true, I'm not putting a lot of stock into it. If this turned out to be true, he would go from one of the absolute great dudes that ever represented the PGA to being villain number one. Just like that. People were giving him standing ovations on how he was standing up to PGA and how he was outspoken. He didn't care. He didn't care if he hurt feelings. The things he would say about guys like Patrick Reed and Bryson DeChambeau. And then all of a sudden you decide to join them because that bag is too tough to turn down. Oof. It'd be it'd be one of the, the career biggest suicide. U-turns. Oh, his his credibility would be done. Yep. Um he he'd he'd be scorned. Mm-hmm. So um like it was a topic at the uh Masters this weekend. Mm-hmm. People were like, yeah, I think there's more to this. I just can't see it. I can't I, either. I, I'm you know, you want to trust people. I just think everything that he has stood for, he would not do that because then he, he, he wouldn't be, you, it would be ugly for him playing in tournaments. Yeah. Uh, like majors. When he's playing majors. Yeah. yeah. More, well, he, more so than anybody. I mean, Phil, Phil was essentially an outcast. I think Phil would look like the Brooks Kepka yeah. again. 
Now, I do think his relationship with Pat Monahan, I, 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 that to me really is fractured. I think he felt that he was sold a bill of goods to stand up for the PGA, and then Pat Monahan, especially as of late, has not kept him in the loop or didn't keep him in the loop before he gave up a lot of his extracurriculars with the PGA. So I do think his relationship with Pat Monahan is very, very fractured. Uh, as we finish here, um, we started the morning. Uh, we all shared our thoughts on uh, Greg Sharp, who announced last night that uh, he has been diagnosed with cancer. So he's in for the fight and he's got a, a huge army of support that is uh, behind him. Um, and so just remember that you see Greg at the ballpark, uh, you know, or wherever you see him, uh, you know, everybody's uh, rooting for him and he's going to do this. I have to mention this um, because I'm willing to add a little money to this. One of the worst things I've seen on local television I saw yesterday. Oh, I'm with you. Then what um, you're going to say. So, you know, we have a uh, a great organization in this town, the Nebraska Humane Society, and we also have a town that loves their dogs. I mean, there are dog parks everywhere. It seems like everybody's got mm-hmm. a dog. Um, dogs are a big business. We love dogs. Well, we had a heinous incident that uh, happened with a a family's dog. So the dog's name is Leo and Leo went missing and the family couldn't find him. And, you know, you got, we've all lost pets or they've run away and, you know, you're checking kennels and everything and um, wondering, okay, am I ever going to find him? And maybe you're lucky enough that your dog is microchipped. Uh, Leo was uh, found and he was found safe. But unfortunately, Whoever took this dog decided that, you know what, let's have some fun here. And I'm using that loosely. They duct taped the muzzle of the dog covering its eyes, tossed it in a dumpster behind a business uh, over on 130th Circle in Arbor Street, about 10 miles away from where this family owns the dog. And luckily enough, the people with the that own the business where this dumpster is behind they thought it was a raccoon, um, and they went to check in the daylight, and that's what they saw was this dog that had duct tape wrapped around its muzzle, covering part of its eyes. Um, the Nebraska Humane Society stepped in. Um, the dog has, you know, it, it's recovering, mm-hmm. but it is back home, and thankfully the good people at the Nebraska Humane Society and these folks at this business were able to rescue this dog um, so that this can have a a good story, a happy ending, so to speak. Um, there is right now a thousand dollar reward, um, out from crime stoppers. If you know anybody that committed this crime, because it is a crime. Yeah. I mean, it taped the dog, the dog's legs and head and threw it in the dumpster. So the intent was to kill the dog Mm -hmm. and torture it on the way. So the rescue humane society, um, has a donor that has matched the reward, I'd be willing to throw in some money as well too. to uh, help find this person that did this to this dog and so that they can never, ever, ever uh, be involved with animals before and we can get them locked up because this is a yeah. crime. Yeah. Fortunately, it has an ending where the family has gotten their dog back. Um, but damn, that's that's one of the worst things I've seen yeah. on TV. Yep. And, there, and you guys know this, a lot of, there's a lot of bad things that have been on TV, local TV, local or national. When I saw that story last night, man, I had to get up and start pacing in my house because I was I was upset. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't even own a dog. And yeah. Rick put it best here. I'm not going to say this word because we had a guest say that, but that's exactly what they are. Yeah. So whoever did, that. I'm 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 willing to throw in some money here to help find this person um, to give a reward to somebody that turns this person in. So if you have any information, um, I'm going to give you the number. Uh, Animal Control is the one that is handling it. 402-444. 7,800. Yeah. Nick from Machachos is ready to donate his food truck for 100. Like everyone's, yeah, yeah. they'll but, find this yeah. person because what we said earlier during the first segment, people here, and I'm saying this as being new here the past couple of years, there's some damn good people here. Yep. They'll rally together, yeah. they'll make it right. Yeah. All right. Uh, crossovers uh, coming up next. We'll keep you updated on uh, on this uh, situation, but uh, we'll find the guy. And we'll, oh, yeah. and, and, I, and I'll, I'll take care of, uh, I'll help take care of the person that uh, turns this person uh, in. Or if you have a conscience and you're listening right now and mm-hmm. you're like, man, made a terrible mistake. Hell yeah, she did. 402-444-7800. Uh, crossover's next. We'll see you tomorrow at 6.